What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmare. Jason's mask. <clears throat> so you were saying? Yeah. You're collecting with the Michael Myers mask? Well, yeah. So, well, I don't know. Like, Michael Myers has always been my top fave. Like, I used to collect his masks, like, back in high school. I'd be, like, selling, like, like old band tees just to be able to, like, start, like, a Myers fund, you know? That's awesome. And I don't know. I just love his character. He's, like, you know, that straight kind of dead-looking face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like, I do, I am a fan of him. I'm Jason, I, I think <clears throat> one of the biggest reasons why I like Jason so much is because when I was a kid, Friday the 13th would come on. Friday the 13th, that weekend, the marathon is all weekend. So I got to watch that movie so much, and then <clears throat> that was actually that was the biggest thing right there. And then when I finally got to see it on VHS, because you know they cut out all the fun stuff, you get mm-hmm. to see it on VHS. And you're just like, oh my gosh, wow, this is what I was missing. Yeah, I love this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was, like I said, I, I don't know what the first movie I seen was, yeah. but I know that that's one that I seen the most, probably by probably by far, because I probably seen those again every Friday the Thirteenth. I'd be Whoever's, t- whoever's house I'm at be right in front of that TV that whole weekend watching yeah. those movies and just like it could be the same one you know sometimes they'll play like say three four five six seven and then three four five six seven and then three I don't yeah. even I didn't even care I'd watch you catch it in the middle like yeah like Showtime or whatever it was yeah yeah <laughs> well for, for for then it was on um, USA Network so that's why I like all the blood and guts was cut out of it mm-hmm. but I would I would watch those movies so much that where I would just know which ones come, like just go in the room. Oh yeah, this didn't look at the TV guide. You just walk in the room, the channel's already on. Oh yeah, this is part six. Like, how do you know? Oh, because this is this this just happened, and this is about to happen. Like, oh yeah, you're right. And I'm still like that now. Like if it's on, I know which one's on. Yeah. For the most part, because it's just such a fan. I love yeah, it. Yeah. It's just one of the series I know so well. Halloween, mm-hmm. I'm kind of up and down with that as far as like knowing it very well. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, I don't know too well at all. I know one and I know one, two, and three. I would say like I can probably I know I can tell you which one's one and three. At least two is a maybe. Yeah. But the rest, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I could not tell you. See, I'm like, yeah, I've always been a massive Myers fan, so like I know like that series very well. I've seen Friday the first one. I don't think I've really seen any of the others. I might have caught like middle parts. Wait a minute. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm embarrassed. Don't judge me. No, I'm not judging. I'm but saying, like, yeah, you have to. Uh, I think you should definitely, you should definitely get into those because I was like, I don't know about you, but remember, like in high school, like okay, you tend to have a bit of an ego. I was a big like, no, nah, like seventies Italian horror, you know. Mm-hmm. So like, I like stuck with that, like ignored like the popular slashers and started like getting all these weird obscure films and like David Lynch, like exploring that. Mm-hmm. See, I, I respect that a lot, though, because me, I'm the opposite. Me was like the big, the big, but that's just because of what I was so used to and what I knew, what I can get up, get my hands on at the time was just the big name stuff. Yeah. And now I love 
the obscure stuff. I love I love B movies. I love indie stuff. Don't get yeah. me wrong, I still love a lot of the big Hollywood stuff, but yeah. now I'm more drawn towards the B movies because I'm just like, holy shit, when did this come out? Aaron, this came out in this 87. Is good stuff, man. Yeah, it's entertaining and it's just like yeah. I love the cheesiness of those those B <laughs> movies. I love the cheesiness of it. Yeah. The ideas with them, and then some of the kills are amazing. Not all the movies are great, but you could say that about any type of movie, as far as B movie all the way up to you know the Hollywood movies. Yeah. But it's just, I'm like, how the hell did I never see this? But then you think about it, I'm like, if it didn't come on TV, yeah, you don't really get to see it. And then it's as far as like going to the video store, you still only, for the most part, I would grab cool, you know, things with like a cool cover, but I would also, yes. <laughs> I would also stick to what I knew or like what I've heard of at the very least. Even if I didn't know, it, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. So I'd stick to those. Yeah. And there was only a select, uh, you know, certain selection per video store. Mm-hmm. And now you have it. I mean, now you have streaming services. You have a bunch of ways to watch it now. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. And it's just, um, it's like, holy shit. Man, I miss video stores. Me too. There's actually a small one by my house. No way. Real small one. It's called Crazy Nick Videos. And I actually, I went there. Actually, when this corona crap started. (laughs) (laughs) This would be the great start of a horror movie. It all began in a video rental store. (laughs) Yes, it would be. (laughs) I went there and I was looking around because I thought you could just go there and buy it. Well, you can buy movies from there, but I thought it was just like a store you know, go there and buy movies, but you could also yeah. rent from there. I didn't know that. So I went there and bought like four, four movies. Cool. Nice little spot. And I was like, Oh wow. I, I knew the place existed, but I just never, ever been in there. And I'm just like, Holy shit. I need to come in here more often when I can. Oh, but right. yeah, I do miss video stores when they were all over the place. Like the blockbusters, mm-hmm. we had blockbusters, screen gems and Hollywood video was like the top three. Yeah. I believe around me at least. And I just miss going there on like a Friday or Saturday. Yeah. This is, of course, if I didn't get in trouble during the whole week, which was rough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you go there, your mother was like, hey, yeah. get a movie, get a game, get, yeah. you know, we can go get something to eat. Yeah. We go there, do that, and had a, I miss it. I, I miss it so much because it was just, yeah. it was so different. And it was like, it got you, I mean, it got you at the house some, obviously, but. Yeah. What I miss about it, too, is we had, say, like, you go to a movie store and you're going to the horror section. Say there's only 80 movies in that horror section. That's all you have. You go there every week, so you pretty much know what's there. So it's not like you're waiting, like, okay, I don't know what I want to watch. Now we have millions of things. Yeah. And you look, like, I get to the point now where it's bad. I'll get mad. Like, I'll, I'll go in there not knowing what I want to watch. Like, I'll, I'll find something. Just flicking through, flicking through. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Let me just go watch something random on YouTube or go do something else and just get mad because I'm like, I cannot figure it out. So now what oh. I tr- I try to like zone into that. Like, yeah. Even yeah. I'll even have a movie cues and still not choose any of those. I'll go through all those and a bunch of other shit and just for some reason, unless I'm doing a podcast, I'm hor I'm usually horrible at movie selections as far as like what I really want to watch. Sometimes yeah. I'll just hit play and I'm just like, oh shit, I'm glad I hit play. But most of the time, it's just like, okay, there's so much stuff to watch. Let me just forget it. Yeah. <clears throat> no, man. Recently, I got Shutter. Everybody was telling me to get it. But I got it through Amazon, okay? So it's a bit different. It's not the same as having Shutter.com or whatever. So oh, here I am. I have mine, too. It's through Amazon. Oh, you have it through Amazon? Mixed with Amazon, yeah. So, like, if I say so, so like, say if I'm looking for a movie, I'll, you know, hit the button. Friday yeah. the 13th, for example. Yeah. And I'll show you can watch it in either shutter or amazon which is great and by the way friday the 13th one through eight is on amazon prime or sorry is on shutter so so i got a project yes yes and i want to test you on that project <laughs> i'm not even asking you questions yeah i want to test you on that project so- <laughs> I, sh- I really should like i know like i watched jason like the part four because i made the mask so i had to watch the film oh you made the but, part four mask yeah yeah totally I gotta see. He's that. almost done. He's hiding me. Like, here, I'll show you. May as well. There you Careful. go. He's not fully done, but. Oh, wow. He's like the gnarly one. See, I don't really have. Um, I don't have any urethanes in my shop, like plastics and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's so many great artists that make the hockey masks. So I'm kind of like, you know what, you guys do you. I kind of enjoy making like the whole latex skin. 
I, I like what you do though because I mean, yeah. well, I have a hockey mask right in front of me. I got this from a con a few years ago. Yeah. Ooh. This is from my favorite one. This is from part seven. Nice. But what you do is awesome. Which, by the way, if you ever make one of the part seven thingy things, please let me know. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but um, no, I, I really like what you do because it's just like I said, it's something different. And a lot of times you do see people making like a Jason mask or like another hard type mask, not like the latex part of it. You do you see some people making latex, but you do all the, the latex, which I think is just yeah, it's very old school. Like again, like who is it? Don Post. You know, you think back to like your classic monster mask. He was like a main one in this industry, and like. It was super like mass produced, like cheesy mm -hmm. colors, but still, it was, there's almost like a warming kind of gym feel about it, you know? Whereas I was like, you know what? I just want to keep doing this. It's kind of fun making like whatever nightmares I have come real, you know? I love it. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Like, originally, I wanted to like direct horror movies because like I loved writing creepy stories. Mm -hmm. He's getting shit by people's parents. They're like, stop fucking scaring the kids. And I'm <laughs> like, oh, man. But then it's like channeling it into sculptures, then into real things. See, I love, <laughs> no. every bit of that. I love every bit of that. Yeah, it's fun. Once we're done recording, I'll show you my, um, the sculpture my brother made. Oh, hell yeah. And sent me a while. It's like my, um, it's like my logo for the podcast now, my mascot logo, all the good, all that stuff. Love it. But I'll wait till we're done because it's green, so I'd have to shut this screen off back behind me. Back, yeah. But it's oh. I freaking love it. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny how like we all have like our studio setups. Mine's just chaos. Is your is your area always chaos? Mine is legit. Yes, it really is. That's why that's another reason I have this virtual background right now <laughs> with the green screen. So you have to see all the crap I have sitting around. <laughs> okay, let me hide this, let me hide this, put this over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, yours work. I mean, yours isn't bad. It works because you're showing off your masks, and it makes sense. It's a great yeah. display. But I'm I getting to that point, though, dude. Like, we're like my. I have so many cement molds at this point, and it's like I'm gonna be. Like, I was thinking about just numbering them off at this point, and then just busting a mold. How fun would it be to bust cement? <laughs> like, I would video that. <laughs> like. Watch. And, safe area obviously yeah <laughs> like, yeah because it, yeah it takes up a lot of space so it's like at this point i'm kind of getting there like all right well how many more am i going to make of these because gotta toss it and make room for new ones you know are they real heavy oh so heavy like we're talking like i would say like the lighter ones like a half mask we weigh maybe about like five to ten pounds maybe max and then my big ones are anywhere from 20 to like, I'd say I have like a 50 pound one. Oh, geez. Yeah, my, my The Thing mold is so fucking big. It's like, I don't want to talk about it. It's a big one. <laughs> like, yeah. that's how I work out is basically to be able to pick up my molds. <laughs> that's fact. <laughs> that's a, hey, you got to yeah. do what you got to do. So yeah. what, what got you like into this? Oh, man. I grew up, my, uh, my sister's seven years older than me. So we used to go to the video store. Again, video stores. Love them. Mm -hmm. um, but we rent uh, the making of Thriller all the time. And I loved watching all, like, the makeup effects and stuff happen. And it was one of those things, I guess that's just, like, deep-rooted in me. Started watching a lot of horror movies. Um, again, I really wanted to write and direct films. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had two options when I hit, like, the whole, like, all right, Time to go to like a university slash college or something. And it was either filmmaking in uh, Dubois, Pennsylvania. Check out that place. It was like a screenwriting class by John Russo, his movie making academy. Mm -hmm. And I went in and it was at a like small town. And I was kind of like, you know, they're showing me classrooms with just like computers and paper yeah. and computers and paper. And I'm like, <laughs> Nah, I'm like, I need something hands-on. I'm like, I've always been a hands-on girl. Like, I don't know school. I was awful at school my whole life. I'm like, give me something weird to squish and I'll make it into something. Yeah? There you go. Um, so I ended up finding this program in Vancouver. Went there for a year, learned how to do it. But I knew the whole time. I was like, I had to learn like beauty makeup. I had to learn like theater makeup. And like, imagine, I used to, I never wore makeup, 
and I was such a tomboy, yo, like so much. So like I get to this, I'm like learning all these basics and I'm like, oh my God. And then finally the last two, I'd say like the last two quarters of whatever it was, I don't know math, anyways, <laughs> the last as many months was like legit studio work. So we're working in like an atelier, like a workshop, building things, making prosthetics. And I realized I'm like, I love working with my hands. Fact, hands down. Love switching things, love making things out of whatever. And mm -hmm. it's fun also working in a team. And so after school, I just, I, I stuck with it, man. I like, I literally left school. I was like talking to the teachers, like, you know, could I take some of the, the head casts? Like, I'm gonna ship that by plane back home because I know I wanna keep doing this. And there's a couple of like my, my classmates that are still working in this industry, like in like the effects style stuff. But it's so funny how it's like, I don't know, like when you know that like you went through with it, like fully. Like I knew this since like high school. I was like, no, I'm always gonna be that creeper making masks in the room somewhere. Like creeping people out. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah. Look what, look what yeah. you've done. Yeah. I think it's amazing, actually. Yeah. It's true. It's true. And it's well, it takes time, right? Like, there's a business aspect to it. There's a, you know, marketing. There's this. There's that. But beyond all the bullshit, I just love creating it. And, yeah. like, what I really love about social media, because I was so scared to post my stuff online, eh? Like, really? terrified. I was like, oh, man. Well, because you're passionate about it, right? You don't want people judging your shit. But that's good. I was so shy. I'm like, <laughs> now, if, like if it was me, me, I would be like, okay, I know I suck at stuff like that. So I'm like, all right, what is this? Aaron? Like, Aaron, what the hell is this supposed to be? That's a that's a Freddy mask, asshole. Thanks. <laughs> no, no. You have talent. Uh, but like, it's still like you still have that underlying like anxiety about it, and you just basically have to tell yourself to shut up, post your shit, and then like. Just share it, you know? It's not so much, Ugh, this is what I do. It's more like, I'm doing this. I'm working on this. I hope you guys enjoy it too, you know? That's literally how I feel every time I post something. Fact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I, I do get it, though. I do get it. Different different area, but similar with the podcasting thing. But I, I actually have the mindset now. I'm like, I don't really care if people like it or not, because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy recording it. So if you don't like it, just skip it. As <laughs> simple as that. If you yeah. enjoy it, you know tell what? about it. Yeah. And listen to it. If you don't enjoy it, tell people about it. And you just don't listen to it. I mean, hey, I know my podcast isn't for everybody, even horror fans, and I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. I think that's I think that's one thing that's wrong with some people is they feel like they have to impress everybody or make everybody enjoy it. I look at it like whatever type of thing you create or whatever type of art you do, as long as you love it, nothing else really matters. Because other people will eventually love it when you put your passion no, into it. No, and people feel that. Once you put your yeah. passion into it, like, I remember I got a question, one of those podcasting panels I was telling you about a little while ago, they were asking us if we make money off of it, and mm -hmm. I just laughed. I was like, no. I was like, you don't, I was like, we won't make money off of it. It's, I said it's not impossible, but I was telling them, I was like, if you're doing, if you're starting a podcast to try to make money, I said, you'll burn yourself out. I said, you'll make maybe... I said, if you're, I said, if you're doing a podcast to make money or to get a bunch of listeners, I said, you'll make maybe five or 10 episodes and see that as far as the listeners thing is only, you know, X amount because you're just starting, you're going to quit within five to 10 episodes because you're not putting your passion into it. You're doing it for money exactly. and for like, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You're not doing it because you want to do it to have a good time and to be passionate about it and have fun. You're doing it because you want to yeah. make money. If that's the case, go get a nine to five. I'm not saying you can't, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. You know what? It's the answer to everything is love the process. It's the same with losing weight. It's the same with making your art. If you're just like, I just want a hundred masks. <laughs> well, yeah. shit, you better love making those, you know, like, because <laughs> they ain't just going to appear. You got to love making it. If you just want to like, I want to be skinny. It's like, great, but you better love working out it, like eating a certain way or whatever it is. It's like, it's such a, you know, we're all, uh, I find it's uh, like the generation, we all want things quick. Yeah. And it's like, no, nah, man, like, just let it play out. Enjoy what you do. Like, love what you do, share what you do. That's it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Because so 
it's one of those things where it's like you rush the process. You don't put the time into it. Even if you do for my, for me, for example, like say I was like, fuck it. I'm just doing this podcast just for listeners, just for likes. I have 101 episodes that are out on my audio thing officially, but it's, I have a ton more behind, but you could rush and get those all out. You can just rush and record, 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 just throwing them out there. And then nothing like, you're not going to get anything or you can kind of take your time and enjoy it. And yeah. People can tell, people can tell like when they, when you're doing something that you're passionate about or when you're just doing it to do it. And I've gotten awesome feedback from my show, which I, I always love that. I'm not even going to lie. It feels, it's cool. Like when oh, yeah, you, I enjoyed your show. Big time. I appreciate it. I like, I, I love when yeah. people will email me or people that come on the show, like, Hey, I listen, I've been listening to your show for a while and I love your energy. And I, like, I try to record with a lot of indie people, like, you know, directors, producers, yeah. Anything and anything, as long as it's horror related, and they know a lot of them know now that I like to do that and try to help promote them, and they'll come on here and thank me for just like what I do for the industry in general, not just for them. Like what you, I'm like I just, I just do it because I enjoy horror. I love horror. Like I don't do it to trying to think. Of how, I don't do it to make a name for myself. Not that I don't want to make a name for myself. I just do it because I really love horror. I really love doing this podcast, and whatever comes from it, cool. If I make a bunch of money off it, I'm not gonna turn that down. But at the same time, yeah. if I don't make any money off of it, I'm not going to stop recording. I say that all the time. I tell people, I'm like, I'm not on a network. As far yeah. as network, I don't know how those go at all. Would I join a network? It depends. Like, if they say they own, I don't care if they say they, owe, they own point zero zero one percent of my work, I'm saying, <laughs> screw it. No. You didn't put one inkling into yeah. this. Yeah. Now, if they're like, you could do whatever you want yeah. with it. We just want you to, you know, mention our network on the show. Okay, fine. We're, you know, that's fine, but there's certain things I just can't let go. And ownership is a hundred percent when I, when and how I record my show and when I put it out, like I, I'll be like, okay, I'll get on your network, but I'm not changing anything. If you want me to change even one thing, no, Aaron, you got to swear less. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. You know, I feel you a thousand percent on that. Cause the amount of times I've been approached at like big cons, like fan expo has happened to me, I think two years in a row where I've had different people come up to me like, have you thought about getting a 3D printer? Or have you thought about sending these to China and getting them mass produced? And I was like, fuck no. Well, I'm like, the whole point is I put my own personal touch and creative literally everything into this. My biggest thing is like, I, again, when I collected horror masks, I only want to own something that like I know is made with like a million percent craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. You know, that TLC's been put into it. And I do that for everything I make. There's nothing that's fucking half-ass. You know, I sit there, again, I would want to buy that piece too. And like using, you know, the top products. So many people like will comment on my shit like, fuck, you're using like expensive paints. And I'm like, yeah, but because I know they work well. I know they're great and I want to buy that too. You know, it's one of those things where you have that, I don't know, you just care, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you're doing quality over quantity which is way more respected. It's, it's just, I mean, you're doing it. You love, do, you love what you're doing too. It's not like you're, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you don't want to make money off your masks, but it's not like you're doing it to like, Hey, I'm doing this just so I can make a shit ton of money. You're doing it because it's like, I really love what I'm doing. Yes, I do sell them. But I really love what I'm doing. I put a passion to what I'm doing. And then when you sell somebody that you want to sell something, you want to sell, but sell, but, wow. You want to sell something with that high quality. And so when yeah. somebody gets there, like, oh, well, you know, if somebody buys that mask, like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Where'd you get this from? This is movie quality. Oh, I got it from, boom, here's where you can get it. You should go get one, too. Yeah. And it's beast that, like, you know, clients can also see, too, how it's made. Whereas yeah. I think a lot of, the, you know, like, yeah, you go to fucking, I don't know, one of these places down the street to buy, like, a $5 mask. No, you're not going to see how it's made. It's probably going to break tomorrow. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. That's one thing I really love, like, with, Blu-rays, for example, nowadays, I have like the special effects, the yeah. behind the scenes yeah. stuff. I it's love seeing cool. that. I'm always amazed by it because I I always say this. I know zero about making anything as far as masks, mm -hmm. the special effects. I don't know shit about it. But I look at it. I say this. I'll say, say it takes you like 40 hours to do a sculpture of a head. Yeah. And you're doing it for a horror movie that you know it's going to get destroyed, which takes two seconds to destroy it. I love that so much. I don't, I don't know how, like, I get it. <laughs> how tense it is on set when you're like, 
All right, we gotta hit this with a bat. It's gotta explode. You got one shot. You're like, oh shit! And then you got the one person like the fucking blood splatter compressor. You're like, this is a time thing. One, two, three, go! <laughs> you better hope it's perfect. Can't we just use the real person? I took a lot of time to make this. <laughs> But it's just like that stuff I respect so much because I'm like, you guys put in so much craftsmanship and so much art and passion into this piece just, yeah. just for it to get destroyed. And I don't mean just for it to get destroyed in like a disrespectful way because it looks amazing in the movies. It's like, oh, it's shit, that's awesome. Yeah. But it's just, I'm just like, wow. I'm just so amazed by stuff like that. Just It could be something as simple as just like, you know, in a doll, the eyes moving or the mouth moving and they're showing the behind the scenes of that. I'm like, that's wow that's cool as hell because you don't think as a kid i never really thought about looking at stuff like that i just wanted to see blood guts and boobs as a growing man i still want to see the same stuff mm-hmm. but <laughs> now i'm more into like the behind the scenes like okay now how did they make that happen how did they make this kill happen and i'm just it's so crazy especially watching like the 80s movie how simple it was like i believe friday the 13th part one where they cut off jason's mother's head it was like <laughs> they had the head mold just sitting on like toothpicks. Yeah. And they chopped the head. And, and it wasn't the girl that cut the head off. It was actually a guy that did it. Mm-hmm. And if you watch it, and if you pause it, you'll see the guy's knuckles. Yeah. And I never, like watching it growing up, I never knew that until I watched um, some documentary on it. And I'm just like, wow, yeah. it's fucking crazy. It's amazing, but it's crazy. And like, yeah. you think, I mean, I knew, I knew somebody really didn't get their head cut off. I knew that. <laughs> just like sitting on something with toothpicks. And it looks so freaking good. The Kevin Bacon kill in the beginning, where they stabbed him through the neck, they just were twer- turning like the air, whatever the blade was, and they were turning it like that to make the blood come out more because the thing wasn't working right. No. I'm just like that. I love seeing stuff like that. Now I want to see it more. And so, like, what you do when you do your masks and you're showing, like, your videos, even if it's like a two minute video, I think that's just awesome. I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. And then you put the pictures up too. I'm always so like that's just it. Like the other day, I did a live of me sculpting, and I'm like, guys, I feel bad because it takes so long, and this isn't that fun to watch. That's why, like, I'll put up a lot of time lapses, right? Because you can see the quick transition. But at the same time, I guess it's kind of cool to share with people because it's like people don't know how long it takes. Some people will see a price tag of a mask and be like, holy shit! Well, yeah, because you're comparing to like your general store that might sell it for like whatever, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, you know? But it's like, there's a reason why it costs money. It takes time, man. It takes tons of time to make this stuff. Okay. Maybe if you're like super quick and uber practiced at it, you're like, you know, out of nowhere, super <laughs> quick. But <laughs> like, it still takes me time. <laughs> like, now, uh, when, you, when you do those masks, do you always record yourself doing them? Totally, yeah. I like, it's one of those things, like, when it comes to sculpturing, no, not, not as much. Like, maybe, like, the beginning parts, like, where you're literally shaping it out, because it's kind of cool to see the transition from, like, again, just blobs to, like, oh, shapes, and then the texturing part, it just takes so much time. So it's, like, I never really take that. I find what people love, and I, I do, too, it's really cool seeing the transition from something with no paint to full paint. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah you just see the character develop right see i would like to see the I, me honestly i'd like to see it go from the block to the finished product yeah it's because i again i can't do that kind of stuff so i'm yeah. amazed by what people can do with you know what everybody has a certain craft that they can do that yeah. you know not everybody else can do and that's something art i'm horrible <laughs> i'm horrible i have i have an older brother mm-hmm. which i tagged him on your post i was like john you should check this out Cause he yeah. does sculpting and all that stuff. I'm gonna show you what he does or what he's yeah. did for me. And I'll try to find his pages and stuff for you too. But he does sculpting. Mm-hmm. He's amazing at it. I have another brother, brother, brother who does like body work and stuff on cars and can draw his ass off and paint. I have another brother who can make, yeah. make beats and rap. I have another brother who can sing and dance. And then there's me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well I can't do any of that, but I can find <laughs> I can podcast though, so I got that for going for. That's huge, you know. Like you can talk it, man. It's huge. It's That's so true. Huge. Yeah. If you think about it, you know. No, can you say? I didn't hear what you said. Can you say that again? I was gonna say like, yeah. I was just gonna say like podcasting. That's like a huge like. That's still massively creative, you know. Being able to talk, being able to keep people engaged, it's huge. Oh, it. 
Thank you. I think it is too. It's it's everybody has something. Everybody has something. And my bro, I would say I know two of my brothers. Public speaking is probably not their thing. The other two, maybe. Yeah. And like just so yeah, I got them. I definitely got them on that. By yeah, I'm shy as shit. I could never public speak. Whenever I had oral presentations, I'd skip it. I'd be like, "Great, can I skip this?" Because. I hate talking in front of tons of people. One on one, love it. It's funny you say that because, like, with me, I was the same way in school, but yeah. I think it was more because the shit you had to talk about then was stuff you didn't even care about. But like, as far as, like, when I'm on, like when I'm on panels and stuff, it's horror related, and I love it. So it's not even a big deal, even though there's other people up there. But it's not like a big deal to me versus like, yeah. okay, well, let's talk about the president. It's like I don't give a shit about them. I don't, I don't care about that report. I did the work. I, I wrote the paper. I'm not doing the oral report part. You can give me a zero on it. I don't care. Yeah. But you yeah. let me talk about something I really, I'm really passionate about, and it's a whole other story. Yeah. Which I think is what kids – What I, I think schools should start doing something like that when it comes to these presentations yeah. and all that. Like these kids talk about something that they're passionate about, and you'll get a whole different – they'll actually do the work. Legit. <laughs> and you probably – like I feel like teachers will learn some crazy shit. <laughs> like – <laughs> kids will be bringing up all kinds of fun stuff you know they'd be like what <laughs> it's, it, it's crazy how like so much stuff has evolved with technology and everything but yeah. school is still pretty much the same from when our parents were. i mean there's different things with history obviously and certain things like that but pretty much the same since our parents were kids our grandparents were. it's like you can't switch this up some to get kids more involved i'm not saying let them bring their cell phones in the class and do all that yeah. but make something to where it's entertaining for them and then they're learning at the same time with everything i agree i agree completely i've never been like a lot of people have approached me like oh maybe you should like teach like art classes or something similar i'm so not a teacher like i speak half the time and like beep bop boop, like sound effects like it doesn't work but <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like if they did that if they came out with so much more like fun classes hands-on man kids would have a ball they'd learn fact, like they'd they didn't realize there's so many more career options and like college options. I don't know if you're like in the States, do they push everybody to do social sciences? <laughs> like, social studies? Yeah. It's like they throw everybody into so and everybody's like, well, I'm going to drop out because I'm not interested. It's like, well, shit, how'd you know that you could have done, I don't know, like set building and theater, <laughs> you know, or yeah. something like. <laughs> yeah, you could anything just let them learn more than just the regular curriculum whatever that word is yeah spread it out more yeah it's i don't get it and then i feel and people to the listeners i will we will get back to horror but you know how this podcast goes but i also feel like with um with school again back with school it's boring (laughs) boring as shit i'm not saying it has to be fun don't get me wrong because work you know you go to work every day that's not always fun but you got to give these kids more options teach them more things too like teach them how to fill out a job application teach them how to fill out a college application if that's the route they want to go also let them know about trade schools because that right there is not a bad thing at all college expensive as hell not everybody can afford it not everybody's gonna be able to go but teach them about trade schools job applications how to fill out a resume make a cover letter like all that stuff Man, if I do it, I say, wait, wait back then. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, teach them about credit. Teach them about credit cards. Teach them about credit. Because it's just not, and I don't, because it's, you don't learn this stuff until you're in the real world. And some people say you should learn it from your parents, but your parents only know what they know. They'll tell you what they know. They can't really school you on it. And your parents are telling you, so you're not going to listen to anyone. <laughs> hey, don't get a credit card. Blow up, dude. Run up this credit card. First thing you do is go get a credit card. Run up that credit card. <laughs> Cause you think, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Like, yeah, I need to stay with you for a couple of days, Dad, because uh, I'm broke. <laughs> but you get what I mean. Like, teach teach them more about stuff that they need, like real world stuff they need to know, like about bills, about you know budgeting, management, maybe investing money. Yeah, starting their own business. Like, teach them about starting their own business, not working for somebody else. Yeah. See, that would be the most creative thing ever. You know, you throw a kid like. Man, you can make any business you want. That's it. So even if you're not like a creative hands-on brain, if you're a creative whatever other kind of brain, like logic or whatever, you'll still be able to, you know, move those kinds of cells in your like in your head and like figure out what you're really into. Like to me, that's huge. 
Mm-hmm. It's just about getting kids engaged, and I think they really, yeah, like you said, they're a bit behind, you know. Yeah, get them engaged, and hey, and I mean, as far as like what me and you do, I'm yeah. not business savvy at all. So if I had somebody that I trusted and knew that was real business savvy, like, hey, Aaron, here's how you can make money off your podcast and all this, boom, boom, boom. You, then you have that person there, so you don't necessarily need a creative as far as being able to make things. And same, I don't know if you're business savvy at all or not, but I mean, similar to you, say you're not business savvy at all. Hey, mm-hmm. here's how you can make good money off these mat with without doing the mass production stuff that you don't want to do still hands on, but doing it your way. But here's a good way to make money. Here's a good avenue to do this or whatever. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. You have that mind with you. But again, I feel I'd rather have a piece, somebody that I know and trust than just somebody like, Hey, I'm paying you to, you know, tell me how to do this. Cause yeah. you could be telling me any damn thing. I'm not going to. That's it. Like that. That's a huge thing. Like I really, I sell a lot online and like I'll sell at uh, Canadian shows so far. But I would love to start selling at American shows, but like that's a big thing, you know, like to sell over to the states. I'm a Canadian; it's you know technically not really that legal. So it's like, you know, they're like, well, hire a lawyer, you know, like a lawyer to help you do all your. And I'm just like, ah, it's not a friend; it's not somebody you trust. No offense, I'm sure there's amazing entertainment lawyers out there, or whatever, maybe. But right. it's that that sense of like. You know, if it's somebody you trust, somebody who's done it, well, then you're like, wow, okay, cool. Like, now I know the steps, you yeah. know, versus, like, this ambiguity, and you're like, well, shit. <laughs> Have you ever done cons in the States? I've gone, so my first con in the States was Texas Frightmare last year. That was epic. But I didn't sell anything there. Me and my cousin went down, and we were just promoting, like, you know, my makeup really shenanigans. We both wore creepy masks. And uh, we met tons of awesome people, partied, and uh, it was epic. It was a lot of fun, but, like, I wish I had a table. Because, mm-hmm. like, you're saying, like, like what we were talking about before, like, uh, was it Monster Mania? Like, yeah. you. this was chaos. This was, like, a lot of people. And we were, like, holy crap. <laughs> like, you know, like, what we do, we're used to Comic-Cons. We're used to the fan expos in, like, Toronto and Montreal. Where, yeah, it's still tons of people. You can barely walk. But it's also a massive venue. Okay. It's like, you know, smaller, yeah. it's only horror, like, it was, it was crazy, it was a cool vibe, you know? Oh, the, the best, I feel horror cons are the best, just because, I agree. <laughs> my thing is, with okay, with a Comic Con, I feel, I'm welcome there, I feel everybody's welcome there that wants to go, but I don't, I feel everybody that is there does not want to be there. For yeah. example, you could have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, husband or wife, whatever the case may be, or kids that are into, like, the comic stuff. And then you're not really into it, but you're going there for support. So yeah. you're like, okay, I'll go there. But you're still having fun. But then you go to a horror convention, and I feel literally everybody that's there wants to be there, and they're having the best time of their lives. That's it. It's, a, it's very much more community versus, like, Comic-Con. Like, it's <laughs> firsthand. I'll be sitting behind my, like, my booth, and, like, you see a guy and a girl walk by, and the guy's like, sick mask. And the girl's like, oh, my God, no. Like, pulling him away. <laughs> like, you just have that, like, dynamic of, like, fuck, I don't want to be here, man. <laughs> exactly. Versus a horror convention, people will be up at your all weekend. Yeah. All weekend, and yeah. you're going to sell some masks. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Even if it, like, that's why I enjoy Texas Frightmare, where you're able to just, like, shoot the shit with different people at different tables. Mm-hmm. Even just sitting outside, like, it got super hot downstairs, we just went outside, tons of people cosplaying, we're just like, what's up, we're from Montreal, <laughs> like, we're that's friendly, cool. like, who gives a shit, you know, it's yeah. just fun, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> how I am when I go to cons, like, I'll be there in line waiting for autographs or whatever, just shooting the shit with people the whole freaking time to get to the front of the line, or... The few times where we did have a chance to be at our table, people would come up and sit down and talk, you know, talk to us or whatever the case may be. And that's all that's always fun. Next kind I go to, I want to be at my table a lot more. It's just I was on um I think we were on like ten or twelve different panels this last con. And it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because how many podcasts showed up for that? It was my podcast and like maybe two others, maybe three others. So between the four of us, we had to do three or four of us. We had to do about 20 panels. You know what I mean? We did, me and my brother did like 10 or 12 panels and then the other ones picked up the rest, however many there were. So it was just constantly, so I couldn't really set up at my table like I wanted to because like I'll set up for like, if I did, it would be like setting up for an hour and then taking everything down because my, because we would all, you know, me and my brother would be on the same panel and then my wife would come watch the panel. So there's nobody there to watch the table and I have, I'm not going to let my equipment sit out there. No. 
I can't do that. No, I, I, I wish I could. I wish we lived in a world where you could literally leave your freaking wallet open sitting on a table and nobody would touch it. But we don't live in that kind of world. So no, no. the only thing I left on my table was a bucket of candy. <laughs> That's because that was for everybody. <laughs> That that was for like my business cards, everything like that I left, but my computer, my laptop, yeah. my mixer, my mics and all that. I was like, no, nah, I got to put this away and bring yeah. it, drag it around with me or put it in the room. Yeah, it was a, like an extension of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's, you know what? Yeah, shows are fun. I really like, I'm anxious to get the show season started this year. This kind of pandemic put a little, a little bit of a damper in it. Like I was stoked for like, our show for May 1st, but now it's like this phone, I think, to like August ish. Mm-hmm. I feel like fall's gonna be lit <laughs> I <laughs> on all I fronts. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, I got invited. <clears throat> okay, so this last con, too, a funny thing. I got invited to two different cons when I was going to, when I was on my way to this one con, I got invited to one. And when I got to the con, I got invited to another one. The first one I got invited to ended up getting canceled, which oh. the the shitty, listen to this, so the shitty part of it was it was supposed to happen in December. They postponed it for whatever reason to February. And then you heard from them like the beginning of January, then you didn't hear anything else from them at all. And a lot of the celebrities backed out. Like, these people, whoever was running this con, which I'll tell you after, off the air, I don't want to give them any type of promotion, good or bad, because in case they come back, I'm not working with them ever. But, um, okay. like, it was supposed to be a huge, it was supposed to be a great freaking con, and they just like, they didn't reach out to people. They didn't refund people right away. Like, you had to – my wife it's had to go through um, it's hard. It's PayPal. Well, the way they did it was shady, though. It was, like, they just stopped. It wasn't like – Fire festival. Basically. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pretty much like that. Pretty much like that. Like, where people bought, bought the tickets. They did this stuff. They hyped it up. They had us podcasters promoting it. And then when it came time to actually, you know, do what they're supposed to do, it was just like, okay, you heard nothing from them. They deleted the, the funny thing was they they had like a Facebook page or whatever, and I guess people were saying stuff on there, so they deleted their page and they were like, We're just gonna be on Instagram and Twitter. And my wife was saying, like on Instagram, they're saying the reason why they did this is because this, 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 you know, people were bothered, whatever the case may be. And then it went from that to just what happened with the con. And my wife eventually got in contact with them and they were saying they told her that she had to go through PayPal to get the refund. PayPal was saying you can get it through them, but they were acting like they couldn't give the refund. So we ended up getting our money back through PayPal, but that con was going to be freaking amazing. I did the VIP thing and everything too, which I was excited for. There's going to be a shit ton of people there. And I could be at my table like the whole weekend, besides like if I wanted to go watch a panel, but I had, I, I wasn't on any panel, so I didn't have, I didn't have to be anywhere. I could be at my table the whole weekend. And you people come to you, right? That's yeah. Nice. Record. Yeah. possibly record with some people. Yeah. Possibly this was a possibility get my wife on the podcast. Cause this is not her thing as far as coming on the podcast. <laughs> and yeah, so that didn't happen, but the week, the weekend ended up still being good because we, it was out in Connecticut mm-hmm. and like, she wanted to go to the aquarium out there anyway. When we were at the con, so I was like, we already had our room booked. I was like, so why don't we just go to that weekend? We have the days off already. Yeah, we have the room book. We just we just go out there and just kind of see what's out there, eat some yeah. good food, and have a good time. So we end up doing that. So I'm not mad about that. I do wish the con could have happened because that would have been an amazing time, but it was still a great, amazing time either way. But it was that con, and then another con I was invited to this October, which I hope happens. It's in like it's about an hour or two hours away from me. I hope that happens. And then there's a con in um, September. My brother wants me to come out. He lives in Colorado. He wants me to fly out there for some. Some con out by him. It's a horror con, and it's like the first time they're doing it. Okay. And during this during this whole pandemic, <laughs> we were gonna be getting our tickets like around now. My wife and I, because it was gonna be cheaper, getting them around now. Yeah. Then yeah. you don't gotta worry about it in September. So now it's like we gotta wait and see. Like I probably won't get if I do go. I'm hoping I can still go. Yeah. I probably won't get my tickets till it's like closer to that time. Once all this crap is over with and like everything's good and you can travel and all that, or else I'm not gonna be able to go. Cause that was going to be a good time. And then I think I hear a bad news that Candyman's pushed back till September. No way. The movie. Yeah. Because of this, this nonsense going on, it was supposed to come out in June and now it's coming out in September. Okay. So no offense. Visual effects artists can work from home. Well, I mean, edit things can work from home. The like, mo- I think the movie. Do you want to release stuff to people who are at home? 
I think the movie's done. It's fu- I think it's just more of like in theaters, coming out in theaters and all that stuff. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. yeah. I, was- I get it. Theaters are sick, but it's like you can for sure still sell it online, man. I would still fucking pay for that. Oh, hell yeah. Me? Oh, my sub will throw I'm like, ball. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she's still in there, but. <laughs> well, they could, um, what was it? I think it was The Hunt and one other movie last week. They had it, I don't know what it was through. Yeah. But you can rent them for like you can rent them for one night over the weekend for it was like twenty bucks, which isn't I, at first I was like that sucks. But I was like you know what that's not bad because say if you're there with your wife and kids or whoever, that's oh, cheap. It all adds up. Yeah. yeah that's cheap. Yeah. And they could do the same thing with Candyman and all those movies. It wouldn't be the same the- theatrical experience, obviously, but still, I mean, put it out there. People will people will definitely get it. And we're home and anyway. They it later. It's like, you know, like when they're like, yes, yeah, so you can go watch The Exorcist at like this cool vintage mm-hmm. theater for one night. Well, shit, just re release it later. I feel like, especially now when everybody's in like a weird, I find that the energy, even right before this happened, before I went on vacation, just the air, everyone is kind of like uncertain. Yeah. This is the time I feel like when like the film, I don't know, film people and everything, like, you know, this is like when you got to give people that extra boost, like, man, don't worry. You got entertainment. You got fun. You'll yeah. be good. You know, like, we're all in this together from a distance, but yes, social, from a social distance. Social distance. <laughs> this, this would be a smart, but this, I think this would be a really good time, too, like, for people who have indie movies that are done and they're not shopping through the, um, mm-hmm. I can't think of what the hell they're called now, the Film Fest. Yeah. That's a perfect time to drop your indie movies. Legit, drop them on yeah. Put them out on YouTube or whatever. I know there's a lot that want to, you know, sell them on Blu-ray. That's perfectly fine. People will still buy them. Like I, Never Hike Alone was is an example. Mm-hmm. I watched that on YouTube when it came out, and I ended up buying the movie because I liked it so much. I loved it. I was like, I want this on Blu-ray. Why not? Yeah, and yeah. Still, I could still watch it on YouTube for free, but like I'd rather just buy this just to have it for my collection. So why not? I'm the same way. If I love a film, I'm going to purchase it. That's why. I mean, you're very fortunate to have that like awesome movie store still open because we ain't got nothing like that open up like back at home. Like there's no video stores like that. It's not big though. Like there's not a a lot of a huge selection. It's still something, but like most of my movies that I get, it's either online or like Walmart or something. I mean, obviously unless it's an indie film. Yeah. I, I used to also do this thing called Horror Block and Horror Pack. And those would each come with like a DVD. Or they're actually, yeah, a DVD or a Blu-ray. Well, one horror block would come with like cool little horror items, and then it would come with a shirt and like a DVD or Blu-ray. And then horror pack was for well, I signed up for the Blu-ray thing, so it was four Blu-rays a month, and it's just random That's Blu-rays. Neat. Yeah. Big name or small name movies, I didn't even care. Yeah. I just I did that for a little bit. Do you remember Columbia House? I miss those little stamps. And you're like, I want Weekend at Bernie's. I want True Beverly Hills. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> I'm like, bring that back at this point. <laughs> something. But they, I mean, there's so much streaming that works. They can easily just stream something on there. Yeah. Even if they want to do it on YouTube and charge you 10, 15 bucks, or whatever the case may be, as far as the movies that are out in theaters. Because yeah. that, way, that way it's not killing the whole theater industry or whatever. And yeah, exactly. The movies are still coming out. People can still watch them. And you can still put them out in the theater. Once this, once this crap is over with, you can still put them in the theater. People will still go watch those movies in the theaters because exactly. they want that experience. And yeah. it's like, I mean, shit. I know I, Candyman's one. That's like one movie I'm really looking forward to this year. That's I don't even know how they're going to redo this. I haven't watched any trailers or anything that's come out on it. I've maybe seen one movie poster. Oh, the trailer, the trailer was great. The trailer, yeah. and it wasn't too spoily, if that's a word. It is now. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like they say, here is everything exciting that's gonna happen. Yep. But you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't that at all. I mean, it, it, it sold cool stuff, but it wasn't like, okay, I seen the whole movie now. Yeah. No. Yeah. Great, and it's not even like a. I guess it's more of like a. Um, they're calling it a spiritual s- sequel. I think it's supposed to be like a direct, kind of like a direct sequel from the original one. Oof. And I believe, do you remember the original one? Yeah, man. Do you remember the baby at the end? Yeah. I think that's the guy in the movie now. Not Candyman, but I think that's the grown, I believe that's supposed to be the grown man in the movie now. Wow. And there's probably going to be a connection to that somehow. And Jordan Peele is producing it. 
I know somebody else, some lady, some woman's directing it, which I think is just awesome. Yeah, he's been killing it, man, in the industry. Like, yeah. Yeah, he has. And this, yeah. this is his thing. Like, this is his type of movie. So I feel it's going to be amazing. And like I said, it's my number one movie. That and The Conjuring 3 are like my top two right now that I can remember that's coming out this year. And I hate, I, I hate that I have high hopes for these movies only because... <laughs> You have to always go in with nothing in your brain. You know what I mean? Like it's hard. It's so hard not to with certain movies. Because yeah. I did this with I did this to myself last year with um, what the hell was it? Pet Cemetery. High hopes. Uh, I waited for it. Cause, and I messed up because I just and I know I know I know I'll say it again. I know movies are never just like the books. But I just recently, I just listened to the audiobook. Like, just finished it up. I'm like, okay, let me watch this movie. And I was just like, oh my gosh. It wasn't terrible. The thing is, the movie wasn't terrible. It was still pretty good. The twist didn't, the, the twist didn't bother me. Yeah. It's just, I wish they would have did things different. I still would have, even if they did the twist, they could have did things a little different. It was like they dropped the ball. It was a disappointment. It was good. It wasn't great. I liked it. I didn't love it. Because I was thinking it was going to be similar to how, um, I, I could be mistaken, but I believe the same people that made it had something to do with a cemetery. So like, yeah. okay, it's gonna be as good as it. It was uh, to me. I love both of them, chapter one and chapter two. And I love how they pulled. Again, it wasn't just like the book, but they did pull a lot of things from the book and put them in the movies. Not as good as they could have with some things, but they still yeah. attempted it. And I was thinking that they're gonna do the same thing with Pet Cemetery, and they just did the complete opposite. <laughs> I was just like, what yeah. the did you read the book? <laughs> I want to say, I don't know if it's a rumor or a fango that I had, but it was basically talking all about the new Pet Cemetery before it came out. So I was already like pumped and I love the original. I'm sorry, there is no other film I've ever seen. And I might have seen that when I was in like grade eight. And I just remember like, it's, this kid's like, blah, 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 boom, trucks back. I'm like, <laughs> like your, your entire stomach sinks. You're like, what just. What did I just watch? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, Pat Cemetery. You know, like, but the new one, I was like, I probably fell asleep twice. <laughs> like, I may have seen like half in like parts, but I was like, oh, man. Like, it, it's definitely something I got to go back and rewatch the remake just because like same thing i think when i first i think the first time i watched it i fell asleep like in the middle of, either fell asleep or was getting ready to do something i don't remember which one it was but yeah. then i went back and finished it later on and yeah. as you know that's just a horrible way to watch movies in general like you got to watch it all the way through because you're because even if even if it's something you really enjoy you're not going to get that feel from it if you're like okay i gotta pause it in the middle for whatever reason and then come back to it later i'm like i gotta start no you gotta start it all over and just watch it all the way through through one sitting yeah, Which I'm gonna do it. Titanic. It's not worth it. It's too oh. horrible. <laughs> that's, that, that's different. I did watch that movie. One, I think one time, and I'll never do that again. It's I'll never do that again. It's it's too damn long. Three hours is too long for a movie, it's especially so a movie long. like that though. Like, cause I know it was about two and a half hours, and it didn't even seem like it at all to me. It didn't, yeah. but I was into it the whole time. Yeah. It's so I was fun. like Apocalypse Now. I was kind of like watching the whole thing, and I was like, "Wow, like this is deep, <laughs> like <laughs> some some dark stuff, man." <laughs> I'm so I'm, yeah. I'm still looking at the background. I'm like, these masks are so freaking wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Welcome to my shenanigans. Oh. That's it. I have like my my masks, and then I have all my molds. And then actually next to this computer, you can't see it, but it's on like all my images online. It's like where I sculpt, it's my messy table. Mm -hmm. It's basically, yeah, I can pour as much cement as I want all over it and clay. And behind me, that's basically where I do all my painting. Nice. Yeah, painting and like gluing, like any kind of minute details. What's that skull? Sorry? What's the skull behind you? The one over here? So this, I'll make you laugh. So I like having fun. With like literally not repurposing masks, but in a way. So I did a Ghost Rider mask a while ago for somebody, okay? Mm -hmm. And they were just like, I really like that. Like basically, you know, like full on for my son, blah, blah, blah. Made it for him. So what I did, what I was like, oh, fuck, I have a skeleton mask. It's still like just hanging out. Like I haven't made another one since. And like we're talking almost like 
seven years at this point. So I was like, fuck that. You know what? I feel like making some kind of creepy zombie looking dude with like a skeleton face. Why not? So I just had tons of fun with it. I'm almost done. I basically, it takes like time to layer up teeth. Just mm-hmm. because, like, I keep going like layers and layers of like 99 alcohol and paint. So it's like translucent and whatnot. But uh, he's almost there. And I feel like it's going to be a fun one. It's just like a creepy looking toxic zombie dude. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. A lot of people are like, how do you get your ideas? I'm like, I just go with the flow. <laughs> like, I know how you get your ideas. You light one up and just boom. Yeah, yeah. You just got to remember it. That's it. Like, if you guys saw the way I draw, it's awful. Like, <laughs> like I draw like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, not good at all. But sculpting, like, I can just, I guess I'm good at, like, 3 d things from nothing. I don't know. No, that's cool, though. Whatever, yeah. wor- I guess whatever works. Yeah. I can't do either. I can't draw or sculpt, so people get real bad. <laughs> like, hey, what the hell is that drawing? Wait, wait till I sculpt it. You'll see exactly what it is. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's supposed to be Freddy, like I discussed with you guys earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that. <laughs> you don't listen. Oh, man. So good. No, I love this stuff. And, like, that's it. I'll never stop. Kind of like, it's kind of like what we were saying about, like, making money off of it or not or this or that. Like, I've been doing this for almost, I think it's been eight years now officially, almost nine. And uh, I fucking love it. And it's one of those things where, you know, more and more I'm sharing myself on different boards. I'm actually, like, it's cool finding your communities. It took me a while to find these little pockets of awesome horror people. And I feel like I finally started finding that, you know? And it's like, I've been told so many times by people where they're just like, fucking give up. Like, you're not making like dough on this, this and that. And I'm like, yo, fuck you, dude. Like, I know this is what I want to do. I know that people are into this. I know there's a, I know there's a huge like pocket of people that are super into spooky shit. Oh, hell yeah. And you know what? I feel like I'm like, I'm finding it. Like I, I found the people there's yeah. tons and it's like, fuck yeah. Can't wait to meet them. You know what I'm saying? Like, take me to all those cons. Take me to all that fun. <laughs> the, cons are so, the cons are so freaking great. Ah, so, so fun. Yeah. I just, oh, man. Yeah. I, lo- I love when people can create things. So, like, different types of art. I, I'm always amazed by it because, again, I'm horrible. <laughs> so, it's just yeah. like, holy shit, you guys can actually do that? That's, that's fucking cool. Like, sometimes I'll have ideas brewing in my head and then forget. But I can't do it anyway. So, I'm like, just, <laughs> but um, I just. It's, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it's crazy. It's like, even on my walls, like I barely have any more space. Every time there's a convention, I'll buy pieces of art. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love seeing the way people can like express different things or whatever. And you find like, sick movies, you know, like. Yeah. In- indie movies. That's another thing. <coughs> Excuse me. That's another thing. I try my best to buy it. At least one, if I can. Yeah. At a con and get yeah. it signed. And I remember the first, first or second time I did it, Someone was, I bought their movie, and then I was like, hey, can you sign this, please? And like, you want it signed, really? I was like, yeah, you did it, right? Like, yeah, I was like, of course I, of course I want it signed. It's your creation. I, want, I would love to have it signed. Okay. They're, I, I love how humble people are, though, like, that do all that kind of stuff, because I'm just like. Dude, that was one of, like, my, like, third, I'd say one of my third mass sales online. The guy's just like, can you please sign the mass for me and, like, number it? And I was like. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? And I was like, oh, I guess like that, that is the thing. Like, if you think about it, it's like, fuck, like it's a hand piece thing. This is original, like shit, you know, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a, yeah, it's a crazy feeling. That's, yeah. I would say sign them all. That's just me. I'm like, look, if I had that talent, if you want my autograph or not, you're getting it. It's going to be on that mask when you get it. <laughs> you're like, get your first. <laughs> What you lying to people saying you made this shit? You look at Sir Sturdy did that. I did that. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So how long does for? I'm trying to think of how to word this without being a. Like how long does it take from start to finish? For your easier, for one of your easier things, one of your simplest masks. I don't want to say they're simple because they're not, but you know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like honestly, if we're talking, I've never really timed myself. Say if I'm just pouring a half mask that mm-hmm. has no hair, no nothing. Pouring it, it just takes a day to dry, 24 hours or whatever, mm-hmm. maybe 48, depending. And then painting, 
I'd say maybe like a solid eight hours. But again, I chopped that up, right? Because it's still yeah. full time. And like drawing times involved and all that shenanigans. Um, but when it comes to sculpting, like right now I'm seeing it. So we started, I'm saying we, because my boyfriend's been trapped in quarantine with me too. And he's been like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'll come squish some clay with me. <laughs> like, go see the process, you know, it's fun sharing. Yeah. And uh, we started this like literally, I'd say about a week ago, not even, I'd say last weekend, Saturday or Sunday. We started on um, two new heads, and I have my Hellraiser one that's still like almost done. But already it's been, what, a week? I'm spending maybe an hour, three hours tops a day on each. And I mean, like, I'm almost there, but it's been like a full week. And like, I don't know about you, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm one of those people who's gonna keep looking and be like, ah, oh, it's not good enough. So it's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but after this, like the mold making process takes about uh, 48 hours just because, again, like it's like an hour process to put the cement on. You let one side dry, you go, you do the back side. Mm -hmm. Again, let that dry, crack it open, reseal it, pour the latex. So it's really the sculpting part that's the deep, like longest. Yeah. And I mean, I'm trying to get quicker at it. Like, this is like a really, like, this quarantine, I'm like, you know, bitch, I take this challenge. I'm just trying to see how many masks I can make during this quarantine. Literally. <laughs> like, right now, it's like, normally each year I come out with maybe three, four new ones, max. Because, again, it's time consuming. Oh, yeah. And, and, like, I get people that commission me to do private stuff. And I only have three heads at the moment that I can sculpt on. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. If I'm going to reserve a head for a client, well, shit, I can't make anything original right now. You know, it's like I have X amount. Yeah. This is like, it's literally like a really fun challenge for me right now. I'm kind of like, it's funny, some dude posted on that. Uh, I was posting about my skeleton one that's almost done. And I'm like, man, I'm almost finished this. And this dude's like, hurry up, fuck. And I'm like, lol. <laughs> I'm like, I feel you, man. Like, I'm saying the same thing to myself. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, literally, like, you'll go over, you'll paint something. And mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm going to go take a break. Like, go to like. My ADD kicks in. Oh, maybe I want to sculpt now. Maybe I want to paint. Maybe I want to stick yep. some eyelashes on something. You know, like. Yeah. 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 Again, I'm I'm kind of similar to that with this with the podcasting. As far as like my yeah. brain just jumping around places. And I remember when I first started this, I was thinking about doing like um, like kind of like show notes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of different ways to do it, and I was. A, I was like, this isn't going to work. I kept trying and trying. My wife was like, don't, don't do show notes. She's like, because the way your brain works, it's not, she's like, you're better off just doing how you usually been doing, just freestyle it. Other than that, yeah. it's not and that's how it works for me. Like some people, I've had podcasts that say they, they do show notes. Some do, some don't. Mm -hmm. I just don't because I know it wouldn't really, it wouldn't really work. Even when I do a movie review, I don't even really take notes on it anymore. I used to in the beginning, but then I realized I'm like reading off it too much instead of just kind of glancing. And now I'm just like, hey, if I remember what I watched from the movie, certain points I wanted to say, I'll discuss it. If not, it'll come to me or someone else might say it. Yeah. But, and then like with, with interviews too, I don't really look up people's stuff too much. Like, I mean, as far as their work, if they have like a project out, I'll watch the project, I'll watch the trailer or whatever. Yeah. But as far as like looking at their IMDB and looking at a bunch of stuff, I don't do all that because I'd rather them come on here and just yeah. have a conversation, like a real conversation about whatever they want to talk about, whatever they're working on. Instead of, okay, well, and, you know, for you, I'll use you. Like, yeah, last year, Vicky got arrested for fighting. Some people, some people in interviews will throw that in there instead of just, yeah. you, like, if you want to discuss it, if you bring it out, then I'll ask about it. But yeah. as far as, like, I don't want to just, because then it sounds too much more, I know it's an interview, but it sounds too much like an interview and less of a conversation. It's almost. Yeah, it's not yeah. natural in that case. And it's, it's. That, and it makes it too much like work. And I'm like, I, I don't want, I don't ever want this podcast to feel like it's a job ever. Exactly. I feel Even like if I make money off it, yeah. I want to have fun with it. And it's been working though. I've been telling people like, Hey, I love the way you interview because it's just natural. It's laid back. It's calm. I'm like, that's how, yeah, it's like two friends having a beer or whatever the that's case. Exactly whatever you what it should be, you know, it's like, yeah. yeah. And it works. I have yeah, I've had moments where I've been at like a convention and somebody's approached me and been like, okay, okay, you ready? Got the camera, got this. I need you to say this, this and that. And I'm like, nah, I make things. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't, don't tell me what to say. I don't know, like, I don't know math. 
I'm the complete. I'm the complete opposite of that. Like if I was coming, up, say if I was coming to you with a camera, I'm just like, hey, it's yeah. cool if I first. Obviously, it's cool if I record. Da da da. If you want to say anything, go ahead. But if not, whatever. Like I, I don't want to coach people on the saying. So first of all, I'd be terrible at that because I'd mess up. <laughs> like here, I need you to say this. Oh shit, wrong table. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's not really <laughs> You're sitting in front of Robert England. So, how was it playing Michael Myers? He's like, okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> well, how was it playing Jason? <laughs> and I don't get starstruck with people anymore. Like I, I used to kind of, but now it's just I'm like they're just once you get to talk to them, like, they're just people, just like the rest of us. They want to be treated that way too. Nobody wants to be like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Or maybe some, I don't know. But, like, you know, like the majority there's, just want to be treated. I'm sure there's some. I haven't, like, I've met, I met Robert England. I met Kane Hodder. And those, Kane Hodder is like my favorite horror icon. Yeah. I met Felissa Rose so many freaking times. Yeah, she's been in a lot of the shows. Yeah. So freaking nice. Like with her, <laughs> I remember the first time I met her with my brother. And this was, I think this was before I even seen Sleepaway Camp. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, like, I seen it, like, one time or whatever. But he's seen it. So he's, like, I think the first time he's seen it was, like, seven. Six yeah. or seven. And so we're at the con. And he's like, yo, there she is. He's like, I want to get her autograph. Da, da, da. I'm like, okay, so let's go get it. He's like, I'm not ready yet. I'm not lying to you. We walked past our table at, at least seven times. To the point where I was like, all right, man. I was like, this is getting fucking weird. I was like, we're up to, like, two creeps. Because we, cause we'd walk around. Like, we'd go, say we go down her aisle. Yeah. And- you know how cons are, how they're like, you go, you go around the whole con? And it was one of the smaller cons, it was scare cons. So you go around the con, got other autographs, did this other stuff, and go back to her her aisle. And every time we go by, you like look over at her. I was like, you, stop. I was like, look, we're getting in this fucking line right now and getting her autograph. And we did. And like after that, it was fine. He was better. And like anytime we seen her since, we'd stop by her table, get her autograph again, probably. But it was like, she would like, hey, Aaron, hey, Henry, come over here. Hey, say hi, blah, blah, blah. Come hang out for a little bit. And I, and I love stuff like that, like where they remember your names and just talk to you for a little bit. Yeah. Not just to get, not, you know what I mean? Not, and not even to get you to get their autograph because they know you already got it. Like one of those kinds, I think I got three or four different things signed at three or four different times by her just because she's such a nice person. She like, I love it when they're real genuine people and they really care about the fans being there and they really want to, you know, conversate with you people. Yeah. And just instead of just like signing something and then just you know like here here's my autograph give me the money have a good yeah. day yeah. that's not the experience I want no and I think that's what the new generation of cons should know you know because again they've been trying to bring the whole horror thing to like comic cons and stuff and it's like you need to have that humble aspect like our I want to say our community of people just like we we like that we don't want to be in like a huge busy kind of you know yeah i don't know we don't want to be in that vibe we want that humbleness it's so much better <laughs> yeah well, you can like grab a coffee and like maybe you're standing next to like you know the candy man you're like what's up dude like, <laughs> like i bought um ken sagos he's friday the third or no 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 nightmare on elm street part three kincaid okay. i bought him fried chicken over <laughs> <laughs> and I told it was hilarious too. Like he he came on my podcast at the con, which I respected a hundred percent because I was talking to him and I was explaining to him on a podcast. I was like, "Hey, would you mind coming?" I was like, "I'd love to have you on my podcast one day." And mm-hmm. he was like, "What is that?" So I told him what it was, and he was like, "Do you have your stuff here?" I was like, "Yeah, I have my table right over here." He was like, "Give me about twenty minutes. Come back and get me." So I did that. Came back and get him. He's like, "He's like, I can sit down with you for about twenty minutes to a half hour." And he did that, and then he went back to his table. But I respect that because I'm like, you're taking a half hour out of your time, let's say, which means as a half hour, people walking past your table, and you're not there, which you can be getting money just to come yeah. talk to me about some horror stuff, which was just awesome. Yeah. So I love that, and I think I don't know if it was that day or the next day, but I was because he would he would come to my table. He was, hey, Aaron, come you know come come hang out with me when I'm walking past the table, come hang out with me. So I'd be walking, like I'd walk by his table, go behind his table, hanging out with him, make cracking jokes and stuff. People would be walking by laughing, getting autographs by him and laughing and stuff. I was like, yo, man, I was like, I didn't see you get up and eat or nothing. Did you eat today? And he was like, no. I was like, I'm going to get you some fried chicken. As a matter of fact, I told him this on the podcast. And I got, I ended up getting him some fried chicken that day. 
from down there somewhere before oh. the con ended. And the next day when I walked by, he was like, that fried chicken was so good. He's like, you were yeah. right. I was like, I was like, sharing and caring, man, especially at conventions. You're such a good human being. <laughs> hey, I, I love that. But, Cause I get it though. Like you see these people at their tables the whole freaking day. They might get up to go to the bathroom or something here and there. I'm like, you mean people walking by with food and stuff like they, they, he has to be hungry. Yeah. You have no idea. Every time I do conventions by day two or day three, no voice. I can't speak. I usually have to have my buddy be like a translator. Like that's how bad it is. <laughs> like, cause it's like you're talking all day and I get so excited. I want to laugh. I want to have a good time. Mm-hmm. sometimes you scream sometimes you karaoke you have a good time but it's like it's crazy like it just it drains you it drains every aspect but it's hella worth it yeah you know? I mean, <laughs> it's it is exhausting like yeah again, the vip weekend we went there that friday i don't know what time we went to bed the next day but i was so exhausted and then saturday was like another all day like when you have a table there not just as a fan, because as a fan, I mean, I could go back and forth either with the podcast, but still, you're like, you want to be there for like every second of it. And we were there Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the whole thing, beginning to end. And once you finally get home, that's when you really feel it. Like, holy, because like that whole weekend, you're on like that, that high, because it's just yeah. such great energy. You're on like that high. It's like, I'm good. Are you tired? No, I'm, I'm fine. You get home, you're just like, holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, I literally, like, that's when I literally quarantine myself for, like, a couple days. And I'm just, like, no more socializing. Just give me fake heads, and I'll be okay. And then you're back to normal. Yep. <laughs> it's, like, 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 the rejuice, you know? Like, I got to get back into it. <laughs> like, I, I had to eat. That was one thing I because I didn't eat that much during the I was just having so much. I ate, but not, like, a lot. Oh, you got to hide snacks. Snacks. And I got home. Yeah, but <laughs> I would have some snacks here and there, but still, like, like a real, real, real food. I didn't have too, too much of it. Yeah. And then, like, when I got home, what did I do? I remember I came here, mm-hmm. brought my brother to his brother's house, because he was going back to Colorado, I think, the next day or the day after. So I went mm-hmm. over there, hung out there for a little bit, and then came home. I don't know. I forgot what I ate. <laughs> I know I had to stop and eat, because I was hungry as hell. Oh. And I think the next day, I ate a lot of food. I was just like, oh, man. And just re- relaxed, rested and relaxed, and then had to get back to the real world and go back to work, which sucked, but. <laughs> it's true. That's my biggest thing. Like, when you go back to, like, quote, unquote, the real world after a weekend mm-hmm. of partying with other horror people, you're just like, ah. Oh. Like, yeah. it's not the same. It's not. <laughs> like, like, I really miss that vibe, you know? Like, I would joke around with friends. Like, why couldn't my parents work harder and be rich so I could just travel to horror cons all the time? Right. <laughs> Not that they didn't bust their ass, but I'll just talk shit like that. Yeah. Well, I, if, if I could, I would go to as many horror cons as possible in a year. Of course, I'd have to fly, though. My wife doesn't like flying, but I don't like being in a car for too damn long. Like, if, if she could and if we could. Yeah. She, like going out to Colorado, for example, she would want to drive out there. I was like, that's too damn long. I want to get out there to a few hours on a plane and then get back home when we have to come home. I don't want to take two days to get out there. <laughs> I can get out there in like four to six hours on a plane. That's but it. That's too much. Yeah. There's so many. And like, you know, there's haunt cons, like that are based more on like obviously haunted houses and props. Mm-hmm. There's specifically horror. You have, again, like more memorabilia type stuff. I feel like there's so many shows right now. And like, I always say it on like my boards, like when I'm like planning on like shows right now, it's a bit hard to plan on mm-hmm. the entire world. But um, it's like, man, like what you're saying about monster mania, like now I definitely want to hit that. And it's mm-hmm. like, you it. know, I wish people would like, like tell me, tell me what like the most fucking most funnest is funnest over now is most funnest place you've ever been, you know, like when it comes to conventions of horror, you know, like, it's, I love hearing those experiences. Honestly, like I said, though, yeah. Monster Mania was great for all the celebrities I had, but I had way more fun at this past Scarecon just with the VIP thing. Yeah. And it's, a small, it's a smaller convention, so, like, you could literally do everything you want to do at the con as far as autographs in, the, like, say, that Friday. And yeah. then the rest of the day, if, you're, if you have a table or not, if you, have a table, if you don't have a table especially, you can just walk around hanging out with people, having a good time, and... If you do have a table, I mean, you can still leave your table or get people to come to your table and record with you for a little bit if they have time, whatever the case may be, which I always try to do. But now that 
the, hopefully the next time that I'm at, I don't have to be where I bring my podcast. I don't have to be on a panel so I can just, you know, walk around for a little bit, talk to people and Hey, you want yeah. to go on the podcast? And I, like, I try to get people who are, which I tried this past time. People wanted to come on, but I literally had no time. Like, um, yeah. you know, other people who I, who make like this other guy, what the hell does he do? Like paintings and all that. I can't think of the word other vendors. That's the word I was looking for. Like vendors. I, I let them come on if they wanted to, to promote, promote what they do and just talk some horror. But I had like, I literally had no time. In it. I was like, oh. I was having a great time, but yeah. I was just so freaking busy. It was a fun busy, but it was like, if I can do it, if I could have done it over again, I say I wouldn't change anything, but I wish I could have had at least one day at my table, like one full day at my table just to, you know, record and all that good stuff. But next time. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I just got to say this. So I hear my neighbors very well. They're blasting Michael Jackson's Free Willy song so loud. And I just want to know. Like, Maybe they just finished the movie because it plays at the end after he jumps over the boy. <laughs> we'll have to get followed up by Sean Paul. I'm like, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's always an, I kind of love it that it's next to my studio too because I'm always blasting all kinds of music like to get my creative juices flowing. But like this moment right now, I'm just like, are you serious? Like, that's, that, that's not your go-to song to get your creative juices going. No, definitely not. Not yet. <laughs> I mean, I love Michael Jackson, but like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I do like more like remember the time, but you know, so it's a little bit more funky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is too much of a slow jam. <laughs> like, yeah, that's 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 something you're gonna start crying because you see the whale jumping over the boy and you get all sad. That's too much. They're over there crying right now, thinking about that movie. Little Jesse, I know I'm dying over here. <laughs> he just wants his whale back. Good God. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie so long. I'm gonna have to watch that soon now. Right. <laughs> In a while, <laughs> that would have been that could have been a great horror movie. <laughs> that could have made such a great horror movie. Right? Like the well, they found the Jaws. No, not Jaws. What was it called? Piranha. Mm. All the piranhas. Piranha was awesome. <laughs> so many piranhas. <laughs> that was. I loved that movie. Yeah. And the 3D one. Yeah, I watched the 3D one. Oh, man, that one was hilarious. It was so cheesy, but it was so good. So good, yeah. It was good cheese. I don't know what it is with me in, like, aquatic movies, shark movies, and killer fit. I just love them when I see them. There has been some that I hated, like, Jurassic Shark. It was just, it was bad. I have not seen that one. I would say watch it. (laughs) I'm not going to say don't watch it, but it was bad. Like, there was that, there was... um. Piranha Jaws or Piranha, or no, Piranha Shark, Jurassic Shark. And it's almost like it's turning into porno, where you, like you mash the name together and it's like it's gonna work. Yeah, I thought it was gonna work and it didn't. It was like the idea sounds cool, but you know what? It, you know what it is? Because I'm not. <laughs> I know they have to do CGI for a lot. I'm not a big fan of CGI. Yeah. Especially when they do shitty CGI. Yeah. So then it's even <laughs> it's even worse. I'm just, I could have did this. <laughs> That's how I feel. It's literally like pixelated paint. <laughs> You're like, fuck. You guys just use like a toy shark. Yeah. <laughs> this is bad. But I watched the whole... But See, my thing is too, like I'll watch a shitty, shitty horror movie and complete it. Why? I have no clue. Any other you genre movie, if it's, if it's That's that bad... Thing. Like any other genre of movie, if it's that bad, I'll just turn it up. Like, All right, you know what? This is bullshit. I'm, turn this stupid shit. I gotta go. I can't do it. But horror... I have turned off some bad horror movies. I can't. I don't remember what they were, but they have to be like really, 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 really bad. Or yeah. my wife has to be watching it with me because she doesn't even like. She'll go to like a certain like she likes B rated movies, but then there's like a certain level. She doesn't like comedy horror, which I love. And then mm-hmm. like a certain rate of horror movies where it's just like, all right, Aaron, this is you. You got to watch this by yourself. This is this is terrible. And there's times like that, and I'm just like, uh. I give especially. Shatter now. I give movies about ten to fifteen minutes. Within ten to fifteen minutes, if the acting is intolerable, <laughs> I gotta say that because there's moments where you're like, "Good God!" <laughs> like the yeah. film work is shit. I'm like, I can't. But like, I feel like within that time frame, like either something sh- like shit's gonna go down, 
Mm-hmm. You're going to get like a taste of the characters. That's what I'm like. I'm either in or I'm not. See, I'm like you though. I'll like, I'll have to do the full thing. Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> a lot where I just, I'm just like, I, I got to see what happens. And sometimes I'll sit there and I'll watch it and I'm like, holy shit, this is going to be in a pretty decent movie or and something cool happened from the movie that I'm like, if I would have turned this off like two minutes ago, I would have missed it. Versus yeah. there's, there's, then there's been somewhere you just watch it and you're like, why the fuck am I still watching this? Why did I watch that whole movie? Like I have, okay. I have one movie I love to death. Why I still have no reason. I I don't know why I love this movie so much. It's a comedy horror. It's called Thanks Killing. I talk about it in the show a lot, and I love the freaking. Movie. Yeah, I heard you talk about it on the last one, Thanks Killing. Yeah. About a killer turkey and. <laughs> Stop it. I did two episodes on it, right? I did one episode. I did one episode where I just, you know, we just reviewed the movie or whatever. We reviewed that one and we reviewed the sequel to it, which is part three. Part three, they're searching for part two. Part three was terrible. I don't like part three. Okay. That's a one-time watch. Part one, I can't tell you how many times I watched that. But I was, I was watching part one in the living room one day, getting ready to do the podcast with one of my friends. And my wife sat in the living room with me for two minutes and then just left the room. She's like, I can't do this. <laughs> I just left the room. So I, I can't watch this stupid shit. I love it. Turkeys are already a bit wild. Like, I mean, turkeys aren't that predictable as birds. <laughs> I wouldn't fuck with a turkey. <laughs> no, this move, the thing is, though, like, the, the turkey doesn't even, it looks like, a, it's like a hand puppet turkey, kind of sort. It's, it's like a big turkey, but it looks like, it's hard to explain. It just looks shitty. <laughs> but I love the freaking movie. I don't know why. It just, as a matter of fact, the one, one guy I had on here is one of the episodes I put out on YouTube. Matt, he's the one who did the episode with me, and me yeah. and him met, and like I've seen, we've seen each other at cons plenty of times. I think we've taken pictures at cons because he carries like a, a, you know, the baby carriers. Yeah. Like he, carry, he he would carry a gremlin in that at con. Yeah. And the funny thing was, I think I may have taken a picture with him. We've never had a conversation at the cons. I have no idea why until this Albany con, and we were waiting in line. I was there with my. I was there with my wife and one of my friends because I was helping him. He was he has a podcast too. It's like a video game podcast. So I was there helping him out that weekend. But I was waiting in line with my wife until she got upstairs and you know, and I met my friend met Matt there. And we were talking somehow this movie came up in conversation, Thanks Killing. And I was like, Oh, you've seen that movie? And it just and my wife was just like, Oh my god, just rolling like, how do you watch this? <laughs> but that's that's how a good friendship started was over Thanks Killing. But that movie <laughs> It's one of those movies you got to turn your brain. Up. Get high and watch it, and you're gonna enjoy it. I'll say that. Uh, thanks, Kellen. There you go. I know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> I, think, I think it's on YouTube. If not, I'll try to. Fi- I'll try to find a spot where it is. But it yeah. might even be on Tubi. Do you have that? No, I've heard of it, and I feel like it's only in the states. Really? Tubi. Yeah. What? I can do a VPN thing, maybe. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it, it's a legitimate app though it's just it has a bunch of movies on there it's a legitimate app it has like a bunch of older movies on there and like b-rated horror movies not just horror but b-rated horror movies and i'll try getting it on my laptop then because i know my samsung tv maybe because it's an old smart tv it okay. doesn't have all like all the apps you know yeah yeah but it's it's a fucking great app and the, the only not even downside i'll say it has ads like It'll be like a 20 second ad here and there. It'll just, it'll do like a little countdown and say, hey, ad starts in 10 seconds or whatever. And then yeah. we'll watch the ad and then it gets right back to the movie. But I, I love that freaking, oh man. I love that app. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, the second time I did a podcast on it, I think I was smoking. I know I was drinking and I was doing it with the two guys I was telling you about earlier, that like smoking all that stuff. And we were doing like a, um, like a live reaction to the movie as we're watching it which was tough because the movies, I love the movie so much and it's hilarious. And then again, I was intoxicated. It was funny. It was a funny episode. <laughs> oh, I love it. But that movie, again, if you're, if you, if you're in the comedy horror, definitely watch it. Definitely watch it. And just turn your brain off, get high, whatever you have to do, get drunk and just watch it. Don't take it serious at all. If you're going to take it serious, you're going to hate it. Oh, no. Yeah, it's true. Got to go in there with an open mind. You know what's funny is I recommended that movie more than like, I swear to you, more than any other horror movie that I've seen. And every, like a lot of horror movies, I'll say most horror movies that I've seen way better than this movie by far. But for some reason, this movie's just like Aaron, just 
It's like it's like it just pops in my head. Like Aaron, make sure you let them know about this movie. The rest of the movies they'll find out about, but make sure they know about this movie and make sure they watch it. You know, thanks killing was for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like the the funny thing is too, the first time I, the first episode I did of it, I dropped it on Thanksgiving, and I told I, like, during the episode I was like, "Listen, this is I was like, this is the perfect movie to watch with your friends and family," which it's not. <laughs> I was like, "It's a beautiful thing." I said, "It's a beautiful di- tradition to watch, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, pop the movie on, and watch it with your family. It's it's beautiful for horror fans. Yes, regular fan, regular people. No, horror yeah. fans that like comedy. Yes, regular." F- mm-mm. It's not going to do it. And it's not child-friendly. <laughs> it's like that moment that I made my little stepsisters watch full rap when they were like six years old. <laughs> and they're like, what's a pussy magnet? I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Yep. I got that. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing's caring. I <laughs> oh, that wonderful movie. I wouldn't say it's inspirational, but it's definitely not. It's just, I don't know. I love it. <laughs> I don't know why. I still don't know why to this day. My journey in life, I was figure out why I like that movie so much. That's it. <laughs> the complexities of why. <laughs> but yeah. I definitely got to see it. <laughs> it's funny because I tell people that they're like, I, I got to see it. And some of them are like, yo, that movie was fucking weird or nuts. Hilarious. Made no sense. But thank you for telling me about it. You're welcome. <laughs> because, you know what it is about that movie, too? Like, I could tell them to watch, say, like, just to give you an example, Friday the 13th. And some people will be into it. Some people won't be into it. But then you put that on, and it's just like, holy shit. <laughs> it's almost just, like, weird and neutral, right? It's like yeah, it is. That that this movie you're either gonna love it or hate it. There's like no in between. There's no oh I kind of like it. You're either gonna love it or hate it. I love it. Yeah. My wife hates it. <laughs> she didn't even finish it though, so that's probably what it is. Like I said, she she literally watched like two or three minutes of it and just left her. And she wasn't even paying attention. She was like on her phone <laughs> and just left the room because she just couldn't do it. I I was. Are you that, are you that guy? Like when you put on a movie, you're like Psst. like watch it. Like you're missing part. <laughs> It it depends, because like, if it's something she's really into, she will watch it. But again, if it's something like that, she'll try for a few minutes and then just say, screw it and play some games on her phone, which, hey. I do the same thing, though. Like, if there's certain shows that she's watching, that I'm, and she knows I'm not into them, I'll like, come downstairs to eat or whatever. And I'll, she, hey, you want me to change? I'm like, oh, you can leave it on. I'm not paying attention anyway. You're fine. <laughs> it's, it's a balance. <laughs> That's true. Right? The give and take. <laughs> it's a balance. Oh, Love it. <laughs> Do you guys have a bunch of um horror kinds out there, or is it more comic kinds? You said right. Honestly, we have two or three local ones, but it's mainly big mainstream like comic cons. Uh-huh. That's the big thing out here in Canada. Like Toronto has like a couple of spooky things that they do. Um, different place in Ontario, Niagara Falls has one that's specifically horror. Um, but there's something about the States. You guys are just so much more into, I think, Halloween in general. Halloween died out a lot here. Like, I seen it, like, even when I had a house at one point, like, we're, like, giving out candy to kids, and I'm like, there's no one. And here I am, like, trying to deck out the house like crazy, and I'm like, Mm-hmm. Shit, like, this is just for me at this point. Like, it's for nobody else. That's how it gets. <laughs> like, it's, I don't know. I think it's, no. it's similar. Well, you know what? It's the street I live on, too, though, because we live, like, on a side street off of two other side streets, so we don't really get too much foot traffic, which I'm glad, because <laughs> the one year my wife was asking me about buying, I'm cheap. I was like, I want to buy the horn. I was like, I want to buy those bastards of damn candy. <laughs> If I'm buying candy, it's for me. But she got some, I think, last year. And we got a couple we got a couple trick or treaters, a few, but not not like a ton, which I'm fine yeah. with. But like I, I think now and my thing too is I'd want to scare people. Like if I'm gonna give you candy, I gotta be able to scare you too. Come out with a mask yeah. and just jump out. Yeah. So that that I would mind I wouldn't mind doing, but I don't know. Maybe next year. We'll see. Or yeah. later this year. Because it's supposed to be on a Saturday this year, too. 
Ooh. They literally, what they tried doing, because we were dealing with like a serious uh, storm, apparently. Like, fuck, I remember going out when it was like snowing, fucking shitting rain, like awful. But it was like blowing rain, really cold. They basically put Halloween off to a different day during the week. So like, there was like, you know, a lot of like parents that are like, look, like, you gotta do this. I'm sitting there like, come on, man. Like, mm -hmm. we would have done it. We would have worn one piece snowsuits, like yeah. fucking ponchos. <laughs> like, yeah, we would have. And I remember see, there was a petition going on. I seen it on Facebook. I think it was on the news too, how they wanted to switch Halloween to like the last weekend in October instead of it being on the 30th. You know, the, I think that's a terrible idea. It, in theory, you know, you know, like it's cool because the kids can this, that. Like, no, you leave Halloween where it is. Leave it where that's it is. It. If it started like that, how Thanksgiving is, how Thanksgiving is like the last Thursday in November, at least, is it like that there too? Uh, yeah, I want to say it takes whatever Monday. Um, okay. I'm not a brain fart. I'm not that good with that. <laughs> but I want to say that it's always a Thanksgiving Monday and it's like the first Monday of the month or whatever. Yeah, see here, it's the last, it's the last Thursday of the month, which I freaking love. Can't yeah. forget that. And it's one of my favorite holidays. Great time to watch horror movies and watch football. Thanks, mm -hmm. Killing. Now I'm jumping chicken wings, damn it. Oh, and I got none. <laughs> like, Hot wings sounds so Who's in Marita me tonight? <laughs> like, who's got me? <laughs> That sounds great. Some hot wings sound great right now. And I know when people watch this episode, they're going to be like, fuck, man. Hot wings. I want some right now. Well, so people, good. go order some hot wings. Hopefully, good. you can get some now. <laughs> I still can't get over these freaking masks. Oh, my God. No, you. you said you've been doing it for about eight years now, right? Going on eight, yeah, or eight years. Going yeah, on eight, right? Almost nine, yeah. Damn. It's crazy. That's, yeah. You have, I mean, like, like, they've evolved a lot. Like, I went from, like, very simple molds. I basically started with like characters that I knew people would recognize mm -hmm. before doing originals. And uh, I have a lot of carpenter masks. Like I'm a big, you know, Myers fan. I've done my They Live. I've done my uh, The Thing. I kind of like kept going with that and then I switched it up, started making a lot of originals. And I love that. I just, I get ideas and I want to make them. And it's really awesome when somebody buys like a piece of your work that's actually just original, you know, like you thought it was scary. Like I got into making like a lot of urban legends, mm -hmm. like, you know, designs, because to me that's like, I can just close my eyes and be like, okay, you read the story, you think about it. What do you think that demon or that guy who's, you know, you think he's outside your house, but really is inside. Or yeah. that person licking your hand from under the bed. What would they look like? You know, I love that shit. That's why I do this. You know, it's that kind of, yeah. Like right now, like what we're working on, this cannibal dude. We're just sitting there. And I'm like, all right, dude, just start blobbing stuff on. Like we just need to make shapes. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, do you know what this is going to be? He's like, no, man. I'm like, I, you know what we're doing? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> think cannibals. <laughs> Than cannibal dudes that are gonna eat their victims and then wear their face and wear their teeth. And he's like, What? And I'm like, Yes, yeah, it's gonna I love that. Yeah, yeah. And he's almost done. I can't wait. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> like <I can> see it. <laughs> and it's fun too. I think the creepiest part is like looking at reference photos for shit. Cause I mean like, yeah, for some stuff I need to look at burn victims. I need to look at uh what's that called like the skin eating disease and mm -hmm. shit like that like because you want to see what textures look like you want to try and mimic that that's yeah. probably like the grossest part to it but you want to look as realistic as possible to an extent and like i was that creepy kid in high school i'm like steak and cheese.com looking at all the gore <laughs> like the dark web you know yeah but because yeah. i wanted to make you know, scars and guts that looked real, you know? And mm -hmm. I mean, I think I turned out okay. <laughs> hey. I think about that now. Like, my teachers are probably like, what the fuck? What's she doing now? <laughs> Do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, you know what? I'm actually working on it. It's still, it's all set up. I think it's just make, it's literally just Makeup Billy. Um, my Instagram is my main channel right now. I have my website, makeupbilly.com. Mm -hmm. And I am going to be like putting a bunch of stuff on my YouTube because I have so much stuff edited. It's just, you know, releasing it out. Yeah. I, I'll I'll share. Share. <laughs> I was just going to say, you should definitely make a chance because it would be perfect. It'd be perfect. Yeah. To do, like, you have the little shoots that you put on Facebook. 
throwing that on yeah. YouTube, people will watch the shit out of that. That's it. It's just editing it like all together, right? That's why I'm at. I have so much content, but like what we were saying, I don't work linearly. So I'll show somebody like me sculpting one thing, and then five seconds later, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go hang out with that guy though. <laughs> like, yeah. So it's like I have all this like footage everywhere, and it's like, man, I don't mind. Editing's fun. Pop it online, let people see it from start to finish, you know? Yeah. That's like. I know I would watch something like that. I like, again, I enjoy watching stuff like that. I'm like, Holy shit. Like, I like those shows, like, how it's made. Like, you can watch, you know, toys and all that stuff, car, whatever. I'm like, yeah. wow, that's how that's made. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm definitely, yeah, especially during this quarantine time. I got time. <laughs> like, I'm ready. <laughs> definitely, definitely do it. And yeah. always, I'll always promote it. And you can always post it on my group, in my group, now that you're in there. I try to tell people that all the time, like post in the group. I don't care if it's your own stuff, post it in the group because it's awesome stuff. And yeah. I know some people with their horror groups are strict with that. I'm like, this is what it's for. I didn't make it just for me to post shit. That's, it gets boring. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so a good building. I share shit. Everyone's got to be a part of it, right? Yeah. Makes exactly. It exactly. Yeah. Well, How many um, Myers masks did you do? I see two, I think. In total, I've done three, but I only have, this is like my first one I've ever made. Okay. I don't know if you can see that out there. I'm yeah, sure that's, like yeah. And then I see the one in the yeah, top. Yeah, one of my 78 I made. <clears throat> He's a smaller one, but I really based it off like the original, like, I think I was sculpting him with the photo of when he chokes her with the uh, phone cord. I really had that like in front of me and then I had like a couple Captain Kirk faces. And then this one was a bigger one that I had made. He was the first or second one. I've sold the first one. This is number two. Um, he's just a bigger version. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things I'm constantly like, oh, I want to make more. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't like that sculpt. I want to make another one, you know? <clears throat> but, yeah. The other one that I have, he's hiding back there. That's actually my uh, nemesis. It's one that I've, it's my last one that I've collected over the years. Mm -hmm. that I kept, and it's by, uh, there's a guy, Terry Lambert, from Cemetery Gate Productions. I was obsessed with his work, and he made a Nemesis version one, and Nemesis version two, and I, uh, I kept my version one right now, based off the, like, the OG. And it's, yeah, I'll never let go of that one. That's one of those things, you know? Uh, that's my, that was my next question, is do you have any masks that you would never, no matter the price, you would never sell it? <laughs> Fact, my first mask I ever made was gay. So I've sold versions of him, but this is the first one I ever made in school, okay? That's awesome. So you see out of one side, and then that's on the back. It's literally sculpted off my face. I don't know if you can see it in detail that well. My, my lighting's pretty shit in here. No, that's but, um, I fucking hate clowns, and it was one of those things. I don't know if you're like this too. But um, my teachers were like, all right, y'all got to design a mask. And I'm like, all right. And I love making things as hard as possible, always. Um, nah, that's what she said. No, but um, like, <laughs> I just thought about that. I'm like, oh, Vicky. <laughs> no, but um, like literally, like everybody's just making like a one-sided mask, a half mask. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to make a two-headed mask. It's like, fuck, you know, like. That's all. <laughs> but, like, I'm happy I did it. It's almost like that swift kick in the ass you give yourself where you're like, no, I'm going to fucking go over and above and I want to kill it. That's fucking, that's amazing. Yeah. And I've sold, like, I've sold a lot of those ones. Like, people fucking love creepy clowns. I don't blame them. They're fucking terrifying. My wife <laughs> cannot stand clowns. She hates clowns. She's scared of them. Like. My my same brother I was talking about earlier. We were at his house. I don't remember. I don't know what the hell we were doing, but he had some like clown things there. He wanted to show us. Yeah. He literally said to him, "If you take these clown things out, I'm gonna cut you." And he just closed the cabinet. <laughs> it was like, never mind. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, oh. and mm -hmm. I don't know if she was serious or not. He doesn't know, but he didn't want to take that risk. <laughs> I was like, listen, I was like, if she caught you, I'm not jumping in between this. He was like, I know. He's like, I understand. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> no, man. 
Yeah, so I wouldn't be able to buy one of those clown masks. But I would I would art the clown though. That I, I gotta get some I they're actually coming out with a figure finally, which I wanna get. Finally. That's my, my, my he's now my second favorite slasher and he's my favorite clown, so I feel like I have to, you know. Which one again? Sorry? Art. Terrifier? Art? Did you see Terrifier? Yeah, totally. I fucking love that movie. It was well yes. done. They're making part two's gonna be awesome. I can't wait for that to come out. Yeah. And I met him in person. Fucking awesome person. I met a lot of that cast. Awesome cast, real friendly. But like the way his body movements and everything in that movie was just crazy. Like I that was just nuts how he moved like he was like a mime slash clown like cause the things he was doing in it as you've seen and then wow. like i like how he was miming a laugh at certain scenes and all that and just quiet through the whole movie yeah i'm just like that's just yeah no it was a very good slasher especially for today's day and like the effects are fucking on point like oh yeah super well done i enjoyed it a lot of people are like or so much violence and gore for nothing. I'm like, yo, you're missing out on life. Yeah, like, they're like, oh, yeah. or, oh, there's no story to it. Like, did, did you watch 80 slashers? There really wasn't much of a story. And yeah. usually when there is a story, they tell it more in the sequel or then on. The first one's the blood, guts, and boobs to get you into the movie. Now they got yeah. your ass in the seat, so now you can listen to a little story. Yeah. I love the whole scene at like the burger shack or like pizza shop, wherever they are. Oh, that yeah. killed me. He's so eerie. <laughs> yes, he did so good with that. Yeah. He did so good with that. Just yeah. messing with the girls. Without even saying a word, messing with people. Freaking them out He's and scaring them. scary clown, too. Like, if you think about all the designs for clowns recently, you know? He's yeah. very simple, but also, like, jesterish. He has a mm-hmm. jest vibe to him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. With that, and the, I did a um, I actually got to do a photo op with them, which was awesome. Like in in costume photo op, that was fucking amazing. Right. I don't know how long it takes them to put that makeup on? Like that's damn near half the day. I'm like hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, would you ever do an art mask? Or have you ever thought about it? Or you? I would, but like again, I tend to when it comes to like copies of things like movies i tend to go for what like i'm like really down with you know what i mean like classics okay um like right now i'm doing the uh, hellraiser chatter because i've always wanted to have that for myself like i've always wanted to have a chatter box and i just I've, I've always thought that was the creepiest centibite and just like weird and easy looking mm-hmm. kind of like wormy um but it's like, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to have. And I love the film. Um, Terrifier, probably eventually. But, like, again, it's not like a, you know, it's not like an all-time classic for me yet. You know what I'm saying? No, I get no, It's not. So. It, I think it will be a classic eventually. It just obviously has to take some time. Take some years. Yeah. Well, like, already, it's like I notice it's so crazy how, you know, the generations are different. Like, I make I make t-shirts, too, right? With, like, like silly horror sayings on them and whatnot. And what I found is I made a Scream shirt. And it didn't even occur to me that the TV series came out. That, you know, they, they, they just kept going with stuff. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's true. It's popular again. Mm-hmm. And it's all, like, younger girls and, like, younger guys. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's true. But, like, meanwhile, it's like, you know, I saw this back in, like, what, 95, 94? Yeah, like, 90, 90s, early two. I forgot. Was it? Yeah, it was some early 90s ish, mid 90s. But like, it wasn't like, it, yeah, like it's a cult classic, but not as much as like Halloween would be or Friday, you know? Like, like it's crazy. This generation coming up, man, they love Scream, and I don't blame them. Billy fucking, like, he's a good, he's a good guy. <laughs> like, I, I'm not a big, I'm not going to say I don't, I like it, I don't love it. I'm not, I was never a big Scream fan. It was all right to me. Yeah. Like, it, was, it was fun. And then I'll tell you that after we record about the cast that I met. <laughs> yeah. I talked enough shit about those two gentlemen. I'm not going to call. I'll talk, I talked enough shit about those two. It uh, still kills me that Cotton Weary is uh, Ray Donovan. I still can't look at Ray Donovan the same way and be like, no, man, like, you're just Cotton Weary, though. <laughs> 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 I had to. 
think yeah, with, with the screen movie though, I, I will say their idea was great. They had a really good idea for the time, and it really helped in that time with horror, especially slashers. It was kind of going downhill from there. But yeah. and they're fun movies. Don't get me wrong; they are fun movies. They just weren't one. Of, they're nowhere near my favorites. Yeah, first that. and second on point. I watched the rest just because I had to. That's how I am. It's funny. Like me and my wife will watch like, <laughs> for example, like how, like if we watch Halloween, yeah. we'll watch the, we'll go through the whole series, including part three. <laughs> we'll go yeah. through like the whole franchise of it. Yeah. I don't like part three. I don't like resurrection. Really? Or, I don't like resurrection. And I don't like, um, part three part with that fucking song. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here, here's what it is with part three. As a kid, I hated it. Cause as a kid, Again, going to the video store, renting movies, and you want to see the whole franchise that's out at the time. Yeah. When we got part three, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this has nothing to do with Halloween at all. But as I, but in my adult age, you know, as social media was out there and yeah. horror groups, somebody, somebody was saying to watch that movie as like a standalone. Yeah. I did that, and I was like, okay, this, this movie really isn't that bad. It's really a fun movie. Yeah. But I still watch it. Like, when I watch the franchise, I still watch part three with it just because. Yeah. Resurrection, though? I, I, I just don't know what the hell they were thinking. With Busta yeah. Rhymes and Tyra Banks, it was, it was. That's when they started putting rappers in horror movies. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> what just <It's> happened? <laughs> why, why, just why? And then the Rob Zombie one, the second one, the Rob Zombie made. I didn't like that one. No, I I kept my ticket stubs for um, the other one, like the newest one that came out. The first one, right? Yeah. That one was good. That one was awesome. But the second one, yeah. And actually, I met the kid who played who played Michael Myers as a kid. Yeah. He wants to be a rapper now. He, uh, I got his autograph. No, I'm serious. Like, I guess he raps now. He has a YouTube channel, and I went good? there to get his autograph for Halloween. And I was talking about how, and he just kept talking about, yeah, man, you should check out my. Uh, I was like, I'm not on Instagram. He's like, yeah, you should check out my YouTube. Blah blah blah. I rap now. This that. I was like, okay, I mean, but, but I know I'm not going to go and listen to it. I don't care about that. I wanted to go there for you being in high school. I music. Now I'm curious. <laughs> I, like, I thought he did an amazing <laughs> job as Michael Myers as a kid. I thought he did an awesome job, but I don't care about your rap career. Like, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love music, but I'm so, like, as far as my rap goes, like, old school. I still listen to, like, Nas, Tupac, Jay-Z. But, like, the old school that I grew up on, new stuff. It's hit or miss with me. Mostly yeah. miss, but some of the new stuff I can listen to, but it's mainly the old stuff. I was just listening to it last night, as a matter of fact, when I was gaming with my brother. Yeah. But I was just, it just seems so weird. I'm just like, okay, so we're talking about this movie. You're over here talking about your rap. You're, I don't know what the hell you want to even call it, but I mean, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. I'm not going to tell you not to do your dreams, but yeah. I think he should stick with horror. I really do. I think he would do great. He did great as Michael Myers. I feel like he would do great as other things. Because he has that look. Yeah. But, you know, I guess he doesn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I don't know. He can make spooky rap videos. What? <laughs> I, I can guarantee you. I've never listened to one song of his. I can guarantee you he had at least one song, if not six, where he mentioned Michael Myers. He had... He has to, because he played him as, you know, he played the kid Michael Myers. Yeah. He had to say something. Yeah. And if he didn't, then he's not, he's not doing his craft right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it for at least one song. Love it. <laughs> <clears throat> you gotta do it for at least one song. I, oh, by the way, I did watch that trailer you sent me. Yeah. That looked great. Cool, eh? That looked great. Do you, you guys work on that? Yeah, totally. So uh, we call ourselves the Dream Warriors. We're like, like a, we're a big crew, and uh, we're all just super passionate about horror. And uh, this is an idea that uh, it's been a while in the works, kind of thing. And we finally finished producing this, and we have our first episode slash like pilot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. We're pushing for like producers to get on board and stuff to see where we go next with it. Because there's so many channels. It's like we were talking about. Like, what do you release on? Do you release on? something online do you just make dvds and do it yourself at conventions you know do you just you know do you try into theater this or that you know but, See, uh, releasing on releasing online wouldn't be bad and you could still do the dvd blu-ray thing if you wanted because again totally. fans would go 
go if especially if they really enjoy it, they'll go and hey, I, I love this. I mean, they'll buy the DVD either way, just to check it out. Some fans will at cons. There's such a buzz because like Mirrorface himself is such an original character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? it's different. It's a different concept. So, um, I don't know. I'm just fucking stoked with everything. I'm like, fingers crossed. Let's fucking kill this, guys. Oh, yeah, like, I hope so. Yeah, I was like, yeah. yeah. Like and I'm, it's just such a fun crew. It's fun, like when you get we're people that like work hard and play hard. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when it comes down to it, we're all professionals in our field, and we all just come together. We we're all passionate about who we're on top of it. So it's like boom, 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 all the energy to something like crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it worked like that. I was like, "Holy shit, this looks fucking amazing." Not bad, eh? <laughs> That's it. I had goosebumps. They let us watch like like the pilot and it was like literally like around 26 to 30 minutes mm-hmm. i literally I just once at the end usually you work your like you watch your shit and you're just like ugh, like embarrassed or like <laughs> not into it or whatever but i literally had goosebumps so it's like oh we're we're sitting on something amazing right now like mm-hmm. this is really cool this is like yeah yeah that's really, that's <laughs> that's just awesome Cause I remember I was asking you earlier. I was like, "Have you ever been in movies, or your work has been in movies?" And you told me about that trailer. And I was just like, "Holy!" Yeah, yeah. I've worked on like yeah, like some indie stuff. I've sent my masks out to. Um, I've worked behind the scenes on like bigger films, but more like the shop and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was actually watching like one of the first shops I did a stage for. They were working on the Arl Stein. Uh, it was called like something Dark Hour. Anyways, it's like this like doll like the first episode on like the Arl Stein thing. It's on Netflix right now. I think. Um, it's like yeah, something about a possessed doll, and I was like, like, holy shit! Like we were pouring silicone into these molds. Like this is like our silly dolls that we were making. It's like oh my god, you see like what it's finally used for, you know? Like that's cool. That, that's the thing though. Like when you work in a shop, it's behind the scenes. It's gritty. Like yeah, it's fun though. I love it. That's. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see, I would love to see one of your creations, like one of your masks being in one of these indie films, like as the main killer's mask. Yeah. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. It has to happen. Yeah. Well, that's it. Like, it was funny. I, uh, I worked with uh, my buddy Steven Sajak. He did a film called Forward, FWD, and it's an indie short. And my buddy, who worked on Mystic Pines with me, uh, Corey Nicholas, he's like out in BC, and he's just like, fuck it, I think I just saw one of your masks on the big screen. I, like, I was just at a horror, like, uh, what do you call it? Like a, like a fucking film thing, what do you call it? Like a film festival for horror movies. And he's like, I swear to God, I knew it was your design, and then at the end, your name came up. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sick, dude. <laughs> like, that's cool. <laughs> like, you know, like, when you, like, you get that point, you're like, oh, man. Like, yeah. it's cool that we can even pinpoint your, like, your style, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another cool, see, another cool thing with that, though, too, would be, like, I mean, once you get your work out there more, where more people see it, you're going to be that person that inspires younger girls to get into something like this to where they don't have to just be doing cute, pretty things. They can do something that's gritty and gory. And still be girly yeah. if they want to be, but still be, you know, do something gritty. Like, oh, wow, somebody, because it's a, like you said, it's a male dominated industry. And then once, once a girl sees somebody that looks like them, they're like, oh, wow, we could do this too. We can make these cool masks too. And then it's just that diversity yeah. which is needed in, which that's one thing I'm loving about horror nowadays. It's more diverse with different genders and races and everything else. Yeah, it's huge. It's, it's, it's everywhere, you know, like. And that's just it. Like, that's a big part of, uh, of conventions for me is, you know, I have a lot of parents that are like, you know, like my kid wants to do this. Like, how do they even get into this? Mm-hmm. And I am all ears or all mouth talking about it. Like, I will show you the way. Like, I will, you know, to me, that's awesome. If you're fucking letting your kid do something cool like this, awesome. I was very fortunate that my mother didn't think I was a complete psychopath. <laughs> she's like nah man you go have your fun you know <laughs> it's good like going to these cons it was cool seeing other minorities at these cons for me because yeah. you don't because you know being brought up especially in the born in i was born in 85 so yeah. you know the 80s 90s era late late 80s early 90s era it's hip-hop it's it's all this stuff that 
people just generalize you like, okay, well, he likes hip hop and sports, and that's that's it. And like, yeah, well, that's definitely not it. I do like, I do love my music. I do love my sports, but I love my horror stuff. There's stuff I like to yeah. do with car. Like, it's just, and I'm more than just these two things. Like, why do we have to be these two yeah. things? But everybody else can be everything across the board. But we have to be music. And the it, it even gets to the point. Well, nowadays, like, because I wear like horror shirts at work every single day. And yeah. so asked me like, "Hey, did you do you know there's a new movie coming out? Are you going to see it? New horror movies." Now, back in the day, my school days are like my earlier jobs before I had all these horror shirts. When I started collecting them, hey, did you see the game? Like, what was the score? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't even watch ba- like basketball. I don't watch basketball. Yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> know. If I'm black. Doesn't mean I know every single song that comes out and watch basketball. I do. I watch football. Yeah, but yeah. ask me yeah. about a horror movie. Ask me about. Oh, you watch? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is my shit. That's it. It's so funny, man. Like, yeah, like the amount of times I do conventions, and I'll, I'll usually have one of my guy buddies with me or whatever. And as soon as somebody sees this artwork and a dude, even if I'm standing there, they'll look at the guy and be like, "Wow, nice work." Yep. <laughs> He's like, "No, she did it," and they're like, "No." <laughs> it's always like this dumbfounded look, and it's like, man. You know, it's just imagination. Anybody can fucking do this. Like, come on. Like, let's, let's be real here. Like, fuck. <laughs> True. I mean, yeah. which I, I just think it's awesome. The diversity that's in, and I'm just speaking on horror because that's just what I pay attention to the most. Yeah. It's awesome that it's being so much more diverse. Like, damn near every day there's somebody new that just looks like you, for example, that it's like, holy shit, they did this. They're doing this. Jordan Peele's a great example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's just, it's like, finally, like, finally. It's it's the same with, like, um, my one friend that does the video game podcast I was telling you about. Me and him were having the sim- same conversation, was similar. And he was saying, like, how in, um, like, video games now, they're having, like, a lot more female leads and even other races of leads. And he's just saying, like, he's saying it's awesome, but he's like, he's like, me being a white male, you don't really notice it because it's just what you see all the time. But he's like, now that it, he sees it, he he loves it. <laughs> Which I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I agree, man. It's fucking beautiful. Yeah. Well, that that was again, like, I'll bring up Comic Con again. That was something I noticed at the last Comic Con. It was, it's very diverse. It's even people who don't even know what Comic Con is mm-hmm. going in because they're like, oh, this is pop culture now. So you know what? I'm gonna give it a try. And mm-hmm. to me, that's cool. You know, even though that's like a mainstream event, it's mm-hmm. like good because then you find people like me, like making spooky shit. Then you find other filmmakers that are making like creepy shit you know like it gives them that taste it's almost like a an easy way to filter someone in who wouldn't normally check it out to see it or want to get it dude and then they're like oh fuck this is nice it's like tiptoeing in cold water you know like eh. yeah yep exactly yeah. and then when they see it like oh wow this guy looks just like me this girl looks just like me i can do i can really yeah if you want if you have it okay all right people i'm not gonna lie and say like those wonderful masks behind her not everybody can do that that's just like a select few you gotta you have to choose your craft that you're actually good at if you really want to do that i'm not saying don't bust your ass and try to do it but don't be surprised if you're not good at it you could do it because i really do feel like people are blessed with certain talents like no matter what no matter when when they do it no matter when that potential is tapped and no matter how long it takes them to be good at it i'll say well to an extent like you said, you've been doing this for about eight years, and I'm sure each year you get better. So it could even be something so small that only you notice that no one else notices, but you're just like, holy shit, like, I made these, these eyes look ten times better today than I did last year or maybe even last week. Yeah. But, again, what I'm getting at is, like, me, for example, this pod, I got way better at this podcast than I did from day one and day two mm-hmm. and day 100. <laughs> yeah. And... You know, not every not everybody can do a good podcast. And people say it's easy. It can be easy, but you gotta keep people entertained. <laughs> you have to keep people wanting to yeah. listen to your show. You have to keep people wanting to come on your show if it's a show like this. And definitely, even less people can do what you do behind you. Yeah, it's shit. <laughs> I put it this way: I interact, and I know a shit ton of podcasters. I know now. I know like. As far as I can, uh, forgive me if I forgot who that can make masks like this. I'll say two. You and my brother can probably. I know because he, he sculpts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So two people. Cool. Podcasters, yeah. at least 10. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's, 
But you got the flow, man. You got to get. This is this is fun. This is a fun time. You know. <laughs> yeah. And that again, like I, I can't wait for you to make your YouTube channel just so I can like watch the videos of the the pro. Even though if it's gonna be like a speed or time lapse thing, just the process yeah. of it from the block to the finished product. Because I'm just like, holy shit! How do people fucking do this? <laughs> Me, like I said, me, I'll cheat. I'm doing 3D printing. Like, you made this? Or, hell yeah, I made this. <laughs> it's just like pooping out this little plastic shape. It blows my mind 3D printing. I still don't get it, but it's amazing. <laughs> uh, it blows my mind too, but when, when they see a video of it, they'll be like, Aaron, you just hit print pretty much. Like after, I still made it. I picked the colors, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, the future. <laughs> is there one mask? I'll say with the older horror movie. Is there one horror, horror, older <laughs> horror movie mask that you haven't made that you would love to make? Older horror movie mask. Honestly, I, uh, I watched Tourist Trap maybe a year ago. I really like that face. It's fucking weird. I got to see that. I actually have it saved in my queue on to be uh, off that. it's a it's a it's a good film um yeah i'd say that and then i've always wanted to make the the full cheese zombie mm -hmm. yeah which is funny because like the cannibal i've been working on now a lot of people are cracking jokes like oh my god it looks like him and i'm like yeah don't say that <laughs> don't work my imagination at this point <laughs> <laughs> wait till it's done yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'd say like those two for sure. And it's one of those things like it's kind of hard. Same with like I'm making t-shirts or like masks. I'm into like obscure shit, right? So one mask I've always wanted to make, which I don't think anybody will take to. Um, at the end of Phenomena, I don't know if you've ever seen that one by our gentleman. So at the end of uh, the movie Phenomena, you literally see... Um, this killer and the killer is like a kid with an uber deformed face who's like a part larvae part like larva slash like human i'll mm -hmm. send a picture of it it's the most fucking obscure face in the world it's fucking weird and i'm like no one's done this and it's so like it's one of those movies where you watch it all the way to the end to see this monster okay. and you're like Ugh. it's like a moment of like disgust and I'm like, no one's done it. I guess I gotta do it. And I love the movie itself. So. I feel like you have to do it. I haven't even seen yeah, one of those things. Cause that's one of those things right there. Like, say you do it, someone's gonna see it and be like, oh shit, where'd this come from? They'll see the movie. Oh, I want that yeah. mask. Or they might just want it just because. And they haven't yeah. seen it anywhere yet. <laughs> but that would be, be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you, I know you still want to do more Michael Myers. Do you have a totally. favorite? Do you have a favorite Halloween mask? I know uh, some people are up and down with them, but certain ones they don't like from certain movies because they look a little different. I am a I'm I'm a fan of the OG, the 1978 one. Okay. Big fan. Um, yeah, there's one like if I'm gonna own any other Michael Myers mask that like somebody else makes, I'm obsessed with. There is one called the Psycho made by Night Owl Productions. I don't know if the guy's still making masks right now. I'm a bit out of the, a tad out of the loop. I used to be hardcore on forums and now it's all like Facebook and shit. Like, <laughs> I'm learning the interweb. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was spot on. This guy did it so well. And that, that'd be a goal of mine, you know? you know? Being able to make it look that fucking good. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely the first mask. Yeah, it is. I guess yeah. that best one i like see i like that one and i like from what i remember the first rob zombie one Ooh, yeah that one was good yeah i agree yeah but again that's that's one of those franchises i don't know so well yeah. where i can like pinpoint which mask i like the best or hate the most because there's some people i think i think part five is like one a lot of people don't like for whatever reason yeah or part five it was a weird fucking looking mask yeah yeah See, I, I don't know that franchise well enough to point that out or remember it. So I'd have to, like, and then my memory sucks. So I'd have to, like, see it next to the original mask. <laughs> so like, yeah, it looks like the same one, doesn't it? Like, Aaron, it's completely different. Like, oh. What we're going to have to do is put a Michael Myers mask on a turkey. 
Then I can grant you. Yeah. I <laughs> got you. <laughs> Oh, and literally, I gotta like watch it. <laughs> like, that's happening. After you watch it, I gotta know what you thought about it. So it's, I will. <laughs> You're like, like, on that. <laughs> be like, what just happened? <laughs> what the fuck am I watching? Why, what does she have me watch? What you might think about that anyway, and then just enjoy it. Or you're gonna be like, ugh. <laughs> 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 Have your boyfriend watch it with you too. If he's yeah. in, is he in the horror. Sorry? Is he in the horror movies too? Oh, yeah, totes. He's into all kinds of movies. He's good. Oh, like that. Good. Yeah. Have him watch it too. And I want to know what you both think about it. <laughs> Done. Done deal. <laughs> it, you know, it might bring you guys closer together. Yeah. <laughs> one of those couples movies where they're like, oh, this is, you know, is going to make our relationship stronger. Yeah. Or it might not do anything at all. I'm just hoping it does. <laughs> yeah, well, we made it. Today's our 14th day in quarantine. We haven't killed each other, so we're good. <laughs> like, then again, maybe you should watch it alone. You're like, what? what the fuck do you have me watch? <laughs> this is the last straw. The last day. That's the whole point, eh? It's like, <laughs> thanks, killing. <laughs> Ruining one relationship at a time. <laughs> That'd be shit. That would be hilarious. No, not. You know, <laughs> not real life hilarious. That would be hilarious. That was the catch line. <laughs> you want to know your significant other? <laughs> Put this movie on. <laughs> I'm stoked. <laughs> you built it up. <laughs> you would, as much as I talk about this movie, you'd think I was getting paid for it, but I'm honestly not, people. <laughs> I didn't get one dollar from it. Nothing. Not even a free turkey sandwich. Nothing. That's <laughs> not I wish there was a fig. I, I love this movie so much. I wish there was like a figure of that turkey because I would buy it, but there's not. It's not. It's just. You gotta get your brother to make it. There you go. I have to. I have to talk to him. I don't know if he'll want to make that. Like, why the hell do you want me to make this shit? It costs more to get this made than what it's worth. <laughs> you like, you have no idea. <laughs> That, that's one of those weird things, though. Like, I feel fans of that movie would gravitate towards it just because nobody has it, nobody makes it. Yeah. When you see it, you're just going to be like, holy shit. It's just, it's so fucking ridiculous and so funny. Love it. <laughs> so many, so many one liners. I forgot them, but there's so many one liners <laughs> in the movie. And <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. I really do hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sure I will. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but shit, man, this was fun. Oh. We gotta do this again. Yeah, legit. No, it was fun. It's always fun finding awesome people that are into horror. I'm a fan. <laughs> I think the next time we should review a horror movie, though. Totes. Yeah. As long yeah. as it's not with um, Nicolas heard, Cage. I was gonna say, you hate fucking Nicolas Cage, so I love Nicolas Cage. My boyfriend hates Nicolas Cage. So this is hilarious for me because I was like watching your thing and he was in the room with me. He's like, yeah, I'm totes for this guy. <laughs> like you would be. <laughs> Smart man. I'm just like, face. <laughs> what, wait, what, why do you like Nicolas Cage? <laughs> I can't even answer. He's just such a spastic wild guy. <laughs> I think that's why I, that's a that's one reason why I don't I just don't like him. I feel wow. like he's the same person in every movie. Yeah. I feel like he just they they like write a script for the movie and then Nick like has his own script in mind and he just goes by that for like every movie. He's always screaming. I just, I don't even think me and that, him. Well, that was kind of like the best part of Mandy for me was his breakdown in that bathroom. I kind of want that bathroom. Like I want that legit like seventies bathroom. <laughs> Didn't it have the toilet that you pull the thing down to flush? It looked like it. It's like, I, I think the bathroom had carpets. <laughs> it was like... It was, it was rough. It was yeah. Rough. The best yeah. thing about... And I said something nice about him in that movie. I, I liked his shirt. The tiger shirt. I want so, that. Yeah. Not the one he wore. Yeah. I want one like it. I don't want anything from him. I don't want his auto. Like, he, I wouldn't... If, if he gave me his autograph, I would throw it in the garbage right in front of him. I don't oh. like that guy. You don't like that guy. I, He's got a, I, like, I know what you're saying. If you, you're either into him or you're not. It's yeah. one of those. Yeah. I don't wish any ill will on him. I wish he would stop acting. I wish he would just quit and do something else. But, you know, he's not going to do that. 
Maybe he's going to be like, uh, like Jeff Goldblum and start doing jazz. Yeah. I don't think I want him doing jazz music. Uh, no, don't, don't let him ruin jazz now. He could just... <laughs> I don't know what he can do, but he could he could find something to do. <laughs> he's, he's he's done enough. He's 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 ruined my life enough. He doesn't need to keep. And we've never met. This is the funny. Like the way I talk shit about him is like we've met and we just had like a falling out. We got into a fight, and it's not that. I just seen a couple of his movies, and I did not like them. And I feel like the way he acts in his movies is how he is in real life too. So I know I wouldn't like him, and I just I don't think we'd get along. <laughs> I really don't. But like him or John Travolta. John Travolta. Really? And I, I like like I, I said I liked Face Off and I said I like Gone in 60 Seconds but it's because the women in the cars I don't it probably had nothing to do with Nicolas Cage <laughs> at all. Like that that could have been the same movie probably even better without him. And Gone and then Face Off I haven't seen it in years but I, have, I gotta admit that was just a good movie. My brother keeps telling me to watch, I think it's called 8mm, something. Oh, yeah, that one's still on Netflix right now. Yeah, it's about, like, snuff slash... It was okay. Yeah. And he was like, he said, Why? I was like, I'm not watching, I don't like Nicholas, I'm not watching that movie. Like, I refuse to watch movies he's in unless it's horror-related, like how Mandy was. Yeah. And the people who recorded with me, the guys who recorded with me, know I don't like Nicholas Cage, so that's why they picked the movie. Yeah. <laughs> That was the big, that was the number one reason. Like, none of us seen the movie at all. So then, you know, obviously we went and watched it. Yeah. And that was the reason why, because I don't like Nicolas Cage. And that, what's the other movie? The Color of Space or whatever? Yeah, everyone's talking about that right now. Color it's like kind of horror related. And again, one of my other good friends, the other podcaster, that's the movie he wants to do on my show because he knows how I feel about Nicolas Cage. I'm like, Nicolas Cage, yeah. at the very least, if you're not going to stop acting, stay out of horror because... I don't want to keep reviewing your movies. Just do something else. Do romantic comedies. Do do something. I don't know. Retire. Give back to the community and retire. That's what you should do. That'd be that's why this coronavirus is going on because of you. You stop acting, this shit goes away quick. It's all Nick's fault. You fucking funny. I can't help it. Like I won't say I hate because you shouldn't hate anybody. Hate's a strong word. Yeah. I don't like him and he probably we just wouldn't get along i really think we wouldn't get along might end up if you watch family guy we probably end up fighting like peter and the chicken as soon as we get in that room together just scrapping all over the place and just walk away like nothing happened i I don't want to be in a room with them and they're just gonna threat people i'm just saying (laughs) i wish they would make like mortal Kombat, but with like silly 90s action heroes. Oh, gosh. That would be hilarious. You know? Like, what would Nicolas Cage's move be? Like, I know, like, De Niro would probably just fucking, like, when the, uh, like, you get, like, a sonic boom. But, like... <laughs> Nicolas Cage would probably do something weird. I don't even know what. <laughs> just body around weird and yelling. <laughs> See, that's it. You'd probably just yell and it would kind of, like, push him back. Like, uh like, that's a million dollar idea. I don't know who's listening to this right now, but somebody do it for me. Somebody would. That would be a fun indie game. People would get a kick out of that. Oh, legit. Yeah. Mortal Kombat. Oh, man. Yeah. Somebody. But, like, yeah. I don't know what you would call that. Too, so I can fight Nicolas Cage. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant. <laughs> oh, don't hate. My laptop's dying. We're at that point. <laughs> I'm like those bad Samsung commercials. I'm dying. <laughs> oh man, this was so fun though. So good. But well, we definitely got to do it again. And I, I seriously, let's let's review a movie again and see what you're up to the next time we record. As far as your awesome masks and hopefully your YouTube channel is up by then. Yeah. But um, if you want to plug anything, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, say what? <laughs> Plug anything, like, as far as, like, promoting? Oh. Well, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, at Makeabilly. Check out my website, Um, Facebook, man, you can add me personally. It's literally Vicky Clarici. Come find me. I post the same shit on my Insta, on my Facebook. Um, and, yeah, it'll be Makeabilly on YouTube very shortly. I can't wait. Woo! <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and I, I, I said this to the last people I recorded with. When I say like any time, I really mean like any time that I'm free to record, I'm down to record. Yeah. You know, else people say like any, you know, like somebody comes to your house, like, yeah, you come over anytime. You say, it, but you don't really mean it. You're just saying it to be nice. I really mean it because it's Sweet. it's virtual. <laughs> But yeah, anytime you want to come on to talk some random horror like we did today, promote your stuff, review a movie, awesome. talk to you about Nicolas Cage, I'm down. Yep. <laughs> and seriously, thank you. thank you for coming on. Though. Totally I, really, okay. I greatly appreciate <laughs> you coming on. Oh, man. Greatly appreciate oh, it. Man. Great time. And I was supposed to tell you something after the show, but now I forgot. Shit. I got to start writing shit down. <laughs> I'm not good at memories. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh i remember one all right i remember one of them so i'll tell you in a second but um yeah. to all my listeners as always i'll see you in your nightmare